doesn't tell me Boondog's anything. I see him, but his tag's not above the not above this point.
going All right, to... welcome to the stream as Draco mutters in the back. Uh, I am Mr. Moondog. We are flying our African tour of our world tour. Uh, we are in Benghazi. Uh, that is Draco right there in that big monstrous uh, C-47, or th supposed to be the Boeing 377. But the closest I have as a model is that C-97. Very close, very similar. A few years difference. But aside from that, what did I just, I just bumped my OBS and gave you guys a dark screen there. Um, I'm all set here in Beechcraft King Air. We are flying from Benghazi to Cairo. Um, it's a little bit longer trip for the C-47s to make it. It'd be like a four and a half hour trip. And we decided with it being a weeknight, we will fly our little bit quicker planes still staying with the props and get there at, uh, in a couple hours it should be about two hours and 15 minute flight time so depending on how quickly we get all started and to the runway we'll be set we're waiting for Zig he's having a little bit of a technical issue uh, but he should be popping in right there between the two of us because that's where he was at a moment ago um, Draco can speak whenever he wants now because I'm done with our intro um, but he's probably, you know, starting his at the moment. So, um, just to start off, I want to thank everyone for stopping in and over the last couple of streams. Uh, I do want to apologize. I watched my last couple of videos and was surprised to find out I had no sound. So I am watching what's going on here, and I see that I my meters are saying that I've got sound. So if there's any quality issues, please leave. Um, comments um be sure to let me know and i i don't want you guys watching a bad stream i don't want you watching a bad video and if you let me know i'll see what i can do to correct it um there are things in the work to finish getting me uh the rest of the upgrade on my computer and you know i want to put out what i would want to watch so that's what we're after here Okay, and we just came in on the end of Moondog's so ranting and raving. No. <laughs> <laughs> Moondog's entrance. So, uh, how yeah, you doing today, Mr. Moondog? Today is not too bad. We're actually in a decent enough mood that this should be an easy flight, which means we're going to both, all three of us, are going to crash at least twice, um, maybe into each other. Who knows? I totally expect Moondog to become a smoldering hole at the end of the runway. Which run? And then I'll, uh, whichever one they give you. Oh, okay. To take and off? I, or land. Depends or land. on how okay. things go. Okay. And I totally will probably land right on top of you. Probably. Okay, we could shoot for that. Um, I was mentioning that we we're waiting for Zig. He's having technical difficulties. He should be popping back in between us as soon as he gets a computer restart and technical issues fixed. Um, Total it should be about a two-hour flight, and the reason we went with these is so that it would be a two-hour flight instead of a four-hour flight, because it's really nothing between Meganzi and Cairo that warrants a large enough airport. Except for, well, sand. There's a lot of sand in between those two countries. And there's probably a couple sort of brush airports, and to be honest, I don't want to land at any more brush airports. Well, we all know how you feel about deserts and cactuses. And if you don't, check out any one of Moondog's Seven Days to Die videos where he <laughs> gets killed repeatedly by cactuses. Or cacti. Cacti, yeah. Let's, let's put it correctly. And yes, Seven Days to Die and Cactus, number one killer for Moondogs. Number two killer? Dogs. Number three killer? Moondog can't jump. I would have gone the other way with that. Uh, I can't jump and I end up dying, landing on whatever, it's, and then the dogs are after that. It's zombies kind of a are close. actually zombies, which are supposed to kill you. It's down the list a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. Fall, you falling on spikes and you yeah. getting killed by dogs. It's kind of a neck and neck there. I mean, I. No, so. the dogs. I've I've handled the dogs a little bit better. I think it's just the falling. Trust me, I'm the one dying. I know where I'm where I'm dying at. Although there are three or four times that you went running through the wastelands and stepped on landmines and blew yourself up. 
which is very entertaining to hear. Um, what do you mean by entertaining to hear? As in, I'm well, ranting and raving and going rah, 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 and stuff like that, or yes. Okay. Well, then in that case, I get that. Uh, I'm just checking payload here, fuel payload, that it's correct on the dash when we or on the dashboard when we get in there. Because if there's a dash anywhere, it should be in right Zig parked next to me. I'm gonna go inside here. And as always, when as soon as Zig gets in, it will never fail. There will be a dash eight following me. <laughs> yes, because even because be. even when Zig is not flying his Dash 8. There still seems to be a Dash 8 either at the airport that I'm at or flying with me. It's a conspiracy. It's a ah, conspiracy. there he is. There he is. He's at least joined us. It will now depend if he can hear or if we see him or not here in a moment. Well, if he um, can get his, his easy dock to play nice. You know, I was just thinking it was weird when I was launching, launching flight sim it pops up a little window that says it's uh, trying to load uh, Easy Dock or whatever. Do you want to allow it? And of course, I always say yes. But after I click that, like while and the resolution's still jacked up. Well, that's um, an easy thing to change just in your settings, correct? Uh, probably. Uh, did it? My antivirus popped up and said it quarantined the program. Wonder if it tried to quarantine your easy doc? That's what I'm wondering. So while we're waiting on Zig to finish up his uh, his stuff, we'll take a look here. For those of you who have never seen this plane before, this is the Boeing 377. Um, it was one of the very first pressurized commercial airliners in the United States. It was built in 1948, was one of the first was one when one of the first planes of this model were built and it flew till I believe the late late fifties or early sixties. Um, it was actually a lot of the instruments and a lot of the technology was taking taken from the B-29 Super Fortress. Um, what's cool about this is that even though it's a large plane, it has a lot of windows. It has 19 windows just on the front. So it gives you a lot of ability to see. And I think I hear Moondog starting up his plane. Yeah, because the batteries are already down underneath 20, 20 volts, which I don't get them started. I'm going to have to do uh, a restart on the flight sim. You don't have an APU? Not on this one. I do. Go ahead and turn that on. Turn our if, master switch on. If I go into settings, it says it's at 1920. Then I wonder if it's an easy dock issue. Pull that back. What do you know? I just did a start without any gauges up because I knew the correct procedure there. Now I can start. Uh, uh, make sure the door's shut. See, it has taken... Moondog a while, but he has learned that you should shut your doors before you take off. Go away. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and open these up real quick. Hey, Evan, how's it going? Welcome, to, Welcome back to the stream. Hey, Evan. Hi, yeah, Evan. I uh, 50 subs with uh, YouTube and Twitch. I, I need 50 on both. 
Uh, yeah, 19 windows is a lot for uh, for a plane like this, but it gives you great visibility. Engine selector to three. We're at prime. Start. Oh, that sounds good. Switch over to magnetos to both. Actually, you know what? Should I have that on? Booster two on. 50 50. Okay, we're right there. We got that. We got lights. Cautionary. On. The horny lights. Start. All good there. Okay, boost. There we go. Oh, that's. That one. Yes, we got that. Selector to two. There. Prime. Start. Okay, and before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we're going to turn our air conditioning on. And then we're going to start yeah, this. flip our generators on, turn the All APU good. off. Full fuel there, and air correct there. Okay, I'm all set. Engine one. I don't see Zig yet. How are you doing, Zig? Still loading. Start. Still loading? Okay. Flip to both. Um, John, it no, is. I don't think we need lights, but we'll turn on dash lights. He, he is, Evan, but it's 50 subs in I, YouTube I, and 50 subs in uh, Twitch. Yeah, I had mentioned that. I had answered that. Did, he didn't hear me. It just popped. Yeah, it just yeah. popped up in my chat. Yeah, because he asked on mine. I, yeah, it, thank you for answering it. I had started to say it. Probably didn't hear me when you were talking. Didn't want to over up state that with you yes 50 subs on twitch and youtube that's what i stated in my one video i'm going to hold to that but it is definitely going to be 50 in both should be able to find me in both it i am mr moondog 88 on youtube and twitch all right that all looks good i tend to do twitch on the weekends which are the trucking and the uh, farm sim and then um, the during the week and Saturday night for the flights and my week stuff is at that point um, I am going to probably get restream set up and I'll probably have it go off of YouTube and then stream onto Twitch and YouTube um, the, the other from BP the other thing that we had that we have been play, uh, toying around with. Um, no, 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 no. You, Don't tell him yet. Wait for us to get in the air. It'll be more exciting. What? <laughs> We've been toying around with the idea of possibly doing a multiplayer far, uh, farm sim uh, where one of us is actually ho uh, hosting a multiplayer uh, a multiplayer uh, map. Um, We've been thinking about possibly streaming that, but you know, we want to know from you guys, is it something you guys would want to see? Is it something you guys would want to see streamed? Or are you guys more interested in... Just the flights. Uh, just the flights. Because, uh, like I said, we play a lot of other games, too. We also do multiplayer ATS and ETS, um, Seven Days to Die, PUBG, um, Arma. And... Uh... We will be doing those regardless, but, you know. If but if you guys would like to see them, we'll be more than happy to stream them. Right. So. Second. You guys can go ahead. It's, it's not working, so don't wait. Not working, he says. It sounds like your antivirus decided to beat up on Easy Doc. Yeah. Get this loud. I don't want reverb going through there. Um, sure, Zig. Yep. 
because I don't I don't have anywhere idea where to start with my issue. Hey, it might be something like you have to uninstall it and reinstall Easy Doc. Oh, don't tell him that because he's got. Well, no, you've got profile settings that should keep your profile separate and just delete the program. I think. What they say they wanted me to go to. Uh, fifteen, right? Right. One one five seven zero. Check my flaps. Oh, sometimes computers can be such a pain. That they can. All right, flaps back up. Uh, Evan, uh, I have 47 on YouTube and off the top of my head, 20. It's my heading for that. 25 or 96 on Twitch at the moment. There we go. Said 16F and then A. Uh, which way are you departing? I said east. Okay. All right, so taxiway F and then taxiway D. D? It has me on, it said A for me, but that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I... Because uh... A has me, I've looked it up, A is down at the... Uh... Yeah, east departure, runway 33 left, using taxiway F okay. and then D. You're doing 33, they have me on 15. Big okay. Okay. Although... That makes no sense. If you're on 33. I'm taking off on 33 left. Okay. And they have me on 15 right. Same runway, opposite directions. Hmm. I think they're trying to set us up. Did you accidentally click that you're going west instead of east? No. Because that would explain why they have you going one way and I'm going the other. Yeah. But I've done that on, uh, like in a air hauler or what, or when I'm just doing air hauler runs, and it'll still send you in the direction of the wind. It doesn't matter. All right, so we're doing a pushback here. Bump my props down because. 50% props is a whole lot easier to control this thing. Oh no, I'll, I'll actually give me a minute here and get us get started. I might actually just pull that up on the other screen and find out what I have there. Holy crap, I almost ran over a Piper Cherokee. Follow Draco there once he gets that thing spun around. Let's see here. Um, I have 28 followers, follower subs, whichever, on Twitch. So 22 more there and three more, and right. we will definitely do the giveaway of something. And I will just do a random drawing of those subs that I have, that will put in once I have it. I haven't gotten everything in, in plant place on how I want to do it but probably have everyone make a comment 
that are interested in it and then pull a name from those that have done done that and if the name will be drawn what's jumping to my head see I don't have a corn ship like Frito to just randomly pick a name well if you had Nightbot you could just use I Nightbot could, I could ask me if I want to go through the whole add a bot thing yet Holy Do you want to go through the whole add a bot thing yet? I'm not sure if I want to go through the whole add a bot thing. Yeah. I cannot believe how tight of a turn they wanted me to make on this taxiway. Oh. I'm thinking this runway is long enough for me to take off on because remember we landed the we landed here with C47s. It's long enough. I've been flying well very similar that plane around. You can handle it, Draco. I have faith in you. Those are famous last words. All right. I have faith that you'll do something interesting with that. Flip upside down and land on top of you? Possibly. While you're taking off? It says 51. 51 current subs on YouTube? have to double check that. I'd be happy with that part. I know it's only 28 on uh, Twitch. All right. Okay, so the antivirus did block it. Do you want us to wait for you? No. Because I don't know how to unquarantine. Apparently, the antivirus has updated, and so has the so the whole uh, interface. You know what? That's why I do I do it the old-fashioned way. Don't go any uh, websites, and just don't use antivirus. That's not true. I use the uh, Windows. I use Windows Defender and Firewall. Yeah. And as long as you don't go to those questionable sites, so as long as you don't let your 17-year-old son go to the porn sites, you'll be fine. While you download farm sim mods from all kinds of crazy places. Uh, it's why I wait for everyone to download them and test them out <laughs> on, the, on the farm sim, and then they go, well, we're just going to put them on the server, and you get them from there, and that's where I get them from. Or straight from uh, the FS hub, farm sim hub. I don't, I don't trust just using the Windows because that, I feel like that can be broken. Same reason I don't use Internet Explorer. I don't use Internet Explorer. I use Chrome. And then I use just that, and I just watch. Knock on what I haven't had any issues, and the couple times that I have, All right. there were minor things that I, once I uh, actually took it back over to my computer guy, he just said, don't do that again. Okay, and I haven't done those once again. And he goes, The reason I don't trust... The reason I don't trust the Windows is because that's built into everybody's computer. So if somebody finds a backdoor in that, and that's what you're that's using, it. or a workaround, then everybody has that, and it, everybody's vulnerable, which is, you know, for a long time, that was the problem with Internet Explorer, is that people were finding 
backdoor intro. Okay, well, that's fine. Are you on 33? I'm already taken off. Taken off? Yeah, I'm, ro I'm going down a runway right now. Oh, well, thank you, Gmail, for telling me that, G that my Gmail account is out of sync on this computer, considering I never use it on this computer. See, we were supposed to take off on the same one. I'm sitting down here at the end waiting for you to clear. I'm sure. I'm already in the air. I see you. It says, tra mine's yelling at me about the traffic, which is you. <laughs> All right. And then when we're about a thousand feet or so up, we will go flaps up. I am skyrocketing right now. Woo. And I'm going to go ahead and make my turn now. This is a good time to turn those all on. Actually, it's on. Off so we forward. So, Evan, if you're still watching, if you can tell me how everything looks on your end and how everything sounds, that'd be a big help. Because I made a few little tweaks. We're rolling down. Ask me to acknowledge. Yes, I acknowledge. All right, and so, we've almost made our turn. So on one of my air hauler flights the other night, uh -huh. uh, I was flying that C-47. Mm -hmm. I forgot to uh, apply any flaps on the takeoff. That's what's cool about that C-47. If you have enough runway, you don't no. need... Sorry, the C-97. Oh. It needs C-97, flaps. I'm thinking you need flaps. <laughs> it needs flaps. I was at the end of the runway going... Oh crap, I need flaps. I got it. Got up in the air. What are you going to be fly uh what's your altitude set yeah, at? I set it for 22, but I'm not sure if I really want to go that far yet. All right. So I need to turn that off. And I need to turn that on. Holy crap, I don't need to be climbing at ten and a half degrees. We're gonna take a look back here, see if we can see Moon Dog. Well, I turned on my navigation, but Zig's thing popped up saying that uh you know, that uh he was playing flight sim. Right. Right over top of where I have the button to turn on my <laughs> Zignav blocked him. Yeah, he did. Come Those temperatures look like holy shit those temperatures are getting up there on the cylinder heads right, I need to pull back a little bit there we go twenty two that I set for which means I also need to remember to turn on the cabin pressure. Adjust it up. Yeah, that's one of the first things I do when I, before, while I'm doing my setup. Flying the two different planes, I sometimes forget that one little thing.
Go away. Yeah, those those uh, those cylinder head temperatures are really hot right now. Two hundred and thirty six degrees Celsius. Ready to give clearance. All right. I know I can't be already 10 miles away from you. Yeah, you can, because I was flying in the wrong sort of, not the wrong direction. But the, <laughs> he was going the wrong way. <laughs> I was headed more south than west at the east at the moment. And that, everybody, is the sound of an Easy Dock owner. <laughs> it's similar to the to the same sound that uh, Chase Plane owners make. Chase Plane. Yeah, it's another one of those uh, camera add-ons for flight sim. Okay. The only thing is that uh, Chase Plane actually causes at times everything to crash. So I've seen it take FSX itself. Air hauler and a, and a live stream with it. Wah, wah, wah. Hey, it's the mysterious and wonderfully suspicious bipolar prophet. God, are you going to hey. get through that sentence? What's yeah, up, I don't fellas? know. I'm trying to make it up as I went along. You you were doing just fine. How are you doing tonight, sir? Uh, I'm so bored that I thought I'd watch this boring as whale shit stuff. Oh. <laughs> All right. Gee, thanks for thanks for the great plug for our channels. You like that, huh? <laughs> Make sure to watch everybody in a monkey show, everybody. Even when they do boring shit like this. No, I'm just kidding. What's going on, guys? Uh, just flying from Benghazi to Cairo. Yeah. You know you hoping... can't do that in real life, right? Yeah. Well, we're hoping uh, we don't catch an RPG in the tank. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why Zig hasn't actually been able to take off yet, because yes. he hasn't cleared customs yet. <laughs> um, my plane has been sabotaged. Excuse me, I'm going to need to look in this suitcase. I don't know why there'd be Russians at Benghazi. I don't know. I think Ernie got pissed off about the goat and buried your plane. <laughs> Looks good, Moondog. Did you get your graphics card settled down finally? Um, what I have is I just have the settings set well for what I have. Yeah, it looks good. It looks great. Looks great. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Okay. This is the smoothest stream I've ever seen you have. And I've been there for most of them. So this one is, this yeah. is very nice. The only thing missing from this is my painted skin yet. Oh, I know, Moondog, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, Everybody's, only, I'm just, I I'm got just, you, just I bringing got you. it up. Well, you know, I finally, I this is busy. the Duke, right? This is the Duke? This is the Beechcraft King Air. Oh, that's the Beechcraft. That's not the one that Roy gave us, right? Because I finally no. just installed that after. Yeah. I don't know how long I've had it. Yeah, I, we, I've, we've all got that. That's a nice plane. Yeah. It yeah, is. We got so I haven't flown it because props, but it is, you know, <laughs> it's, it's great. I did load it up and take a look at it. It's really, it's really good. I mean, I may have to, are you guys doing air hauler stuff right now? Is that what you're doing? No, no we're, we're just, just doing a just flight. Flying. Yeah. Just a flight. I may have to jump in with you guys someday. I, I keep saying that. But you say it. You mean it. We don't think no, you're I, just bullshitting us. No, I know. I, I, I want to do it. I do. And then, I just... then what happens? Uh, Old Ridge. Uh... <laughs> no, you know what I'm doing now? You know what I've been doing for the last two hours? As, uh, so as, everybody... uh, Astro Knox? No, no, no. Because if that was the case, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd just be like <laughs> trying to get Jim or friggin' Duke or whatever that last robot's name was to do things. Um, I got it. But no, I've been playing on, um, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's... It's Negase Valley, I think it's called. What it's what it stands for is not another Goldcrest edit. It's a okay. huge like Midwestern map, and I discovered these really cool uh, anhydrous ammonia tanks and a big toolbar applicator, and it cuts individual furrows right. So each knife is its own furrow. Now it, you get a frame rate. Well, I don't get a frame rate hit, but if you had like a low end computer, you get a frame rate hit. But I'm using seasons, and the first day of spring, it's snowing, and it's cool to watch it cut the little furrows in the snow. It's cool as hell. So I've been doing that for the last two hours, just going. <laughs> <laughs> so how is is that map pretty cool? Because we've actually been looking at doing a um 
a multiplayer map for when we do our live streams so people don't get bored of just us flying. No, game. you're not allowed to. No. You, <laughs> flying is your. Listen, you guys. What are you guys going to. What is this? The Monkey Show 2 over here? You guys going to branch off into your own thing? You guys hardly <laughs> ever hang out with us. I mean, we if you're going to play Flimsy, you... Moondog hangs out with us. Draco and Zay never do. I'm busy all weekend. Ugh. It's a well, scheduling issue as much as anything. You need to yeah. stream between 10 and st- midnight. I stream every day. Once a week. I stream every day <laughs> at 2 p.m. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I mean, I say yeah. pop up on my phone. So, like, there's BP again trying to distract me from work. No, if you, I mean, obviously, if you guys want to, if you guys see the thing is, I was kind of thinking about maybe because I don't know how long we've been on aggravation. No, no, how long we've been on that map now? Uh, is it three weeks? Four. So it's a month. Yeah, we got to start yeah. looking at more maps. I like this one. This one's really good. It's done very I well. Mean, w- w- there was the ultimatum from the, you know, bipolar profit that we had to get the thirty some million back. But yeah, well, the way we spend money, I don't see that happening. <laughs> I do want to cut all that grass though, so that'll be a couple. No, yeah, we want to cut the grass. Obviously, we want to bail it. If you guys want to do farm sim, do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Well, that's like, uh, like, like what we're yeah. going to listen to you and not. No, we're, well, no. I could just take you all off the month control list. I'm just saying. <laughs> No, that's cool, man. We'll no. do whatever you want. No, of course. We, we to be honest, com, I compl- even told Frito. Uh, I hung out and watched Frito's stuff, and from that, yep. I met Roy and met you guys, yep. and absolutely thanked him. Thank him for branching me in this direction. Wonderful sure. people I've met, and no, I wouldn't actually do anything to, to piss you guys off, and I don't think I want to even leave hanging out with the no. Monkey Show. No, oh, I just listen, nice, I'd never guys. leave the monkey show. It isn't, it, 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 we're not, you know, I mean, it's not an exclusive club. You guys are allowed to do whatever you want. Right, I've been right. anti, I've been anti-social for the last two days because I just can't be honest to talk to anybody. And I finally felt t- like tonight, I'm like, oh, these guys are streaming. Let me go see what boring shit they're doing and I'll hey, watch that for a minute. <laughs> every Tuesday night, 10 o'clock Eastern. And every Saturday you night, guys, 10 o'clock Eastern. You guys stream late too. See, I couldn't stream this late. Well, I mean, I could. I just wouldn't, well, I'd be, I mean, I'm fairly uninteresting on a good day. Never mind at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, we've, we've seen you come in and we've heard you come in. Yeah. You are not uninteresting at this time. You're I should probably, probably have asked. Very... <laughs> no, you're, Zig, no, sorry, no. I just got to sort of drop in like I owned a place. I didn't mean to do that. So. No, what we're saying though is you're, you are interesting. You're probably not stream interesting. You're stream I bombing interesting, but and that's I'm completely... And hey, we we drop in on your stream, so. Well, I wish you'd do it more often. But anyway, so, enough about BP. What did you think of that picture I put up? I posted on the. That's you know I was looking at that. That thing's not that big. Oh, uh, really... I had to take it from pretty far away. The cops wouldn't let you get anywhere near it. Yeah. But it actually took up two full lanes, and they actually had to have the utilities crews come out in buckets ahead and push up the street lights and power lines so that way yeah. it could go underneath see that's cool now i've seen them like i've seen documentaries uh somebody uh Mundo, somebody's asking in your chat what your plane is i would tell okay. them but i have no okay. idea <laughs> we have no idea this is the beechcraft king air I was 200 b uh it's from flight one and it's a really nice mod i mod it's a really nice mod. it's a really nice plane it's pay where come to mind um I'm very happy with it. Uh, the oh, only plane fantastic. that I'm, the only plane that I like more than this, is actually the C-47. Yeah, you guys love that DC-3, huh? I oh, tell you what, so cool. every time I watch you guys fly that thing, I want to buy that PMDG DC-6, but I don't want to put that kind of money into it because I know I'll fly it twice, yeah. and it's super oh. complex. Oh. The only thing I have an issue with is I bought the DC-6 from Just Flight, nice yeah. plane, but the C-47 kills it and it's yeah. free and it's and free like, right and i i haven't flown the other one like at all and it's like i'm i'm taking it under this consideration i'm flipping the price of the two i'm i'm saying the d6 is free and the yeah. c47 i should have paid what i did for the other one so it's <laughs> it ends up balancing out that way some there are some very good payware out there and there's some really bad i mean there's some very good freeware out there and there's some really bad payware 
Right. So yeah. I've had some awful, oh, just horrible play. The the uh, the black box uh, A320 when that first came out was horrible. It was so bad, and of course it was only like early access was like twenty bucks or whatever. I got a deal through VA to get it, and it was just awful. And I'm like, well, I won't fly that again because I have the Aerosoft A318, 19, and 20, which are fantastic. Maybe not study level in the sense of PMDG, but good nonetheless. But then they fixed it, and it got really good. And I wish that it kept it, because now it's $80. <laughs> so, live and learn. Well, Moondog got me interested in uh, flying that uh, 757 that Roy found. Is that the freemium one? Is that just yes. flight's freemium one? Yeah. You know what? For a free plane, now, it's not as probably detailed as it could be, but I have flown that plane, and it's good. Yeah, no, it's it's not. There's stuff that you should be able to do that you can't. <coughs> but for free. But for free, it yeah, I did like it the other day. I I just qualified in it in air hauler, yeah. And that it was a nice flight. It's it, it it's flies quick. good. It's it quick. looks good. Oh sure, it's quick. Of course, it's quick. That's what it's designed to be. It's quick. I no, I took off from Macron Kent, and it's like okay, turn to this heading, turn to that heading, turn to this heading, and I was over Lake Erie. I'm like. Right. This is an hour and a half drive almost, and I'm there in like 10 minutes. Like, well, you guys are used to flying these 240-knot prop planes. <laughs> you get in a jet. But, you know, you're, wait till you fly a real jet. I, I am consistently at 600-plus knots. You know what I mean? I don't have time to screw around. Oh, that's why you don't fly a, a 757 or a 747 or even a 737 for a 20-minute flight. You know what I mean? Because by the time you get up, you're coming back down again. Yeah. And it, it, was, it was nice because it... What was it was a four hundred knot before it was over speeding, but if if sure. a three eighty like it was nothing, I had to back yep. off. I'm like, nice. And the and the higher you fly, the faster you can go. Right. So up to a ceiling. I don't know what the ceiling on a seven forty seven is like on the seven. I mean on a seven five seven. The seven forty seven is about. 41,000 feet. I like to get up there, but it's hard over Europe. It's hard to get that high in Europe. You can rarely ever get that because of the damn military. But well, see, right. you know, and and it's nothing against like tube liners and stuff like that because I, you know, there's some I really you know am, am interested in flying. But you know, like the prop planes, they have they just seem to have a little bit more character. Sure. Well, you've never uh, flown for, a PMDG uh, 747. Turn, okay. Get a plane. Or, get it. You, you want character? Get a plane. Diagram. Turn all he's, the he's, at, he's, okay. wanting to, he's wanting to. He's wanting the new sp new plane smell. Here's the back with the holdouts <laughs> and, and the leather seats. And oh, here we go. There we go. There's. Here we go. He's yep. He's gonna show off all his cool stuff now. Look at me and my drink holders <laughs> and my my chest tables and. Yep. Oh. There you go. There's the whole. Th Where's the hot? Where's the hot? I almost said stewardess. Whoops! How long have you been flying for BA? <laughs> BP. Where's the hot cabin crew? That that's on the C forty seven. That's does Nancy. This one, <laughs> does this have the? Does this have the? Is this the one with the lights so you can turn on from back there? From the? Yeah. Oh no, you can't walk yeah. around it. You, no, you, you can't can. walk around, but you can sit back there. You can turn the light on, like yeah, your individual yeah. light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can. Uh, no, you can't walk back there. Stuff. Wait, are you like, you down there for like fifteen thousand? He is uh, at, yeah, at fifteen thousand. Yep. Fifteen and climbing, actually. Yeah. Well, he's just coming to fifteen now. Did you say you were going to do something at a certain sub? Because uh, Mr. Evan Iverson here has been yeah. asking you about sub count, which is at fifty-one, by the way. Congratulations. Is it fifty-one? Because I fifty-one. I turned it on. It was forty-seven. Fifty-one is good. I said fifty and fifty. Fifty here and fifty on Twitch. Free giveaway. Oh, and cool. I, and what are we giving away? I don't know yet. It will be a game. <laughs> it will be a game. It will not be Shower with Dad. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> well, now there's a new simulator. It's uh, it's no, Big don't, Daddy Simulator. Please, let's not talk about that because that is just uncomfortable. It, it there is are, uncomfortable. There are limits I... to what I will play, and that one made me oogie. I was like, <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good with that. You were oh. the one that brought it up, though. So, But it yeah, will well, not I thought be it was. The... The... I thought it was a DLC for Shower with Your Dad Simulator. Turns out it's a whole different game. No. <laughs> so, no, it will be probably in the $15 range. Cool. I don't yeah. know which yet. Um, Absolutely. I, and now would be a good segue for me to... No, I'm sorry, not my stream. I'm not, gonna do that. not your stream. Don't do that. 
but <laughs> I will mention that uh, the farm, uh, the BPG community's farming Olympics is coming up. And if you want any information, check out BP's page, or we could just let him speak now. So, <laughs> because he mentioned it, now I have to mention it. Bipolar Profit Gaming and The Monkey Show are proud to present the Farming Simulator Olympics, uh, first ever and annual Farming Sim Olympics, uh, a fun and competitive skills challenge where you get to test your skills uh, and showcase your skills in Farm Sim, and hopefully win a cool prize going to be given away uh, some Farm Sim stuff. Um, and all the information for that is on my channel. You can check me out by clicking on my name in the chat. Uh, and that's all I want to say about that because I want to hijack everybody's stream. So. But these guys are all part of The Monkey Show. So when I expect to see all of you there, Block off that time, August 20th. I will be there. Well, I know you'll be there, Moondog, because you're going to win the backing up challenge. But <laughs> I, I have to now. You've built it up. That if I don't, what's, I'm in trouble. What's the, what's the master alarm there, Moondog? What are you doing? I, I was playing around with the uh, throttles too much there. Oh, did you turn it? Did you put your prop conditioners all the way to off, to fuel cut off? I've done that so many times in the Crash 8. Well, oh, and you can't turn them back <laughs> on again. You've done it, right, Zig? You've done it. I know yeah. you have. Yeah. No. No, I I hit the uh, auto uh, to adjust the mix. Yeah. And it set it all the way down. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And because I have the auto uh, restart switched on, so oh, like, so if it's yeah, it'll turn itself back on again. It'll keep it'll keep it running. So that's why I did that, and that's what the alarm was. I actually knew what the alarm was. Good job. Good job. Uh, yeah, this well, looks really good. This the is, sub yeah. count was 47 when I checked it earlier, so I've gotten three. Uh, yep. that's, that's Bipolar Profit. He's here. Yeah. Uh, we, we leased him for the night. It's going to cost us $6,000 to keep him for much longer, so we're going to have to kick him out at some point. Evan must have subbed 6, with his... Evan must have subbed with his other three accounts. He might have. I, I know BP has two. Bipolar Profit you know one and two. He's your, ver he's your no. version of Farmer Dad. Yeah. No, you're right. He's on, he's on multiple screens. You should always have that guy. There's nothing wrong with having your own personal Farmer Dad, who I miss very much. And so does everybody else, because I've noticed that the amount of people that hang out in the Discord has, has just dwindled down to nothing since he's been on vacation. When he comes back, I'm going to be like, you're never allowed to leave again. Well, oh. It's not been that... I've been dealing with my work in uh, pay hit stuff. I've got that sort of under control. I've got work sure. coming in. Yeah. So I've my couple of days have been longer. So I've come in and I've quite literally said hi to Roy and Frito, harassed Frito, and then left. So Yeah, Frito's been around quite a bit. It's cool. It's good to see him back again, you know? Yeah. Had, we've been having like an old time reunion because you guys probably won't know this, but you know, Jim, James R.W. Powell, my good friend, and then, yeah. um, you know, Yoda, the guy who got me into Farm Sim 15, who bought I, me it. You know, Hitman uh, was in your stream the other day. Hitman was in my stream, yep. And Fadman tweeted me uh, out, and I haven't talked to him in like three years. It's like an old, it's like an old YouTuber's reunion, which is really cool. I, 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 I'm really, that's awesome. These guys, you know, these are the guys I come up with, so it's great to see him. It's great to talk to him again. Oh, um, but yeah. So, can I get a? Can you, can you show me a root? A root moon dog? So I have an idea. Um, of where no, you're... no, no. Yeah, yeah. Give me a second here. So when uh, when did Jim pop into your stream? Uh, pop into Discord? Uh, he's been well. He was on yesterday, but he's he's got a cold, so he didn't want to talk. He's very particular about his voice. Being an audio guy, you know, it's his thing. Right. Uh, but he's been in the stream for the last couple of days, so. You have 12 accounts. Well, if you're going to subscribe to me, Evan, could you just use one of them, please? <laughs> oh. So, um, well, that ex that explains it. Half of my half of my subs are Evan. Yeah. yeah. So they're, obviously they're, you're going up North Africa. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're uh, it should be popping up here in just a second yep. there. I see it. Very nice. That's a good route. Right right along right along the coast. Very nice. Well, if you Pop that if you put that in the flight planner, it wants to send you from there over to Greece through Turkey back down yeah. and around. Yeah, because that's probably the correct way of doing it. And we said, Nope, we removed all the VORs and I made the plan myself. Well, I'm Wait. sure we're flying through like a giant no fly zone or something. Yeah, there's a bit of that. If you're using real world navigation, like if you go to Simbrief, are you do you guys use Simbrief? If you don't, you should be. Simbrief no. is fantastic and it's no. free. Um, if you for for routes, 
for like, and, and you can, I mean, you can get real world roots. You can make up your own roots. It's, it's awesome. It'll give you a whole PDF file of all the information, your fuel, your weights, your balances, you know, your, your passenger count, your route, your VORs, your weather, real world weather. Um, it works with Active Sky and Active Sky Next and Active Sky 2016. It is great. And it's free. Sorry, all you got to do is sign up. This. And that, and, and it, this stream is in no way brought to you by the makers of SimBrief, but I use it. Well, it's it's built into BA. That's who we use to, to generate our uh, our routes from. So it's fantastic. So uh, so you can generate a route and then put it in the flight sim, and it'll yep yep. You can download it as multiple different formats, whether it be a flight sim flight plan, whether it be for an Aerosoft plane, a PMDG plane, a PDF. That you, so you could just print it out and put it in yourself. It's it's awesome. Just search sim brief. Um, sign up. It's great. I've been using it for years and years, and it just keeps getting better. But yeah, there's a lot of no-fly stuff up here, so that's probably why they brought you out over Greece and over into Turkey. Because um, right. well, I know when I fly, when I fly to Johannesburg, I have to go out over the ocean. I can't just go straight down the middle of Africa. So well, I have to. We're, go we're just out. being rebels, you know, at the moment. Well, yeah, I've until been the Israeli to... Air Force shows up and <laughs> says, you know, we'd like we'd like you to turn now. You know? I'd be like, see, I have an American flag on my plane. I'm friendly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm cutting any shit out here in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care about that. No, I've been trying to um, get pl uh, Plan G to work, and I cannot figure out Plan G. Plan G is very old now, I believe, right? Isn't it? If, you, if you're serious about flight planning and stuff, and, and you want to spend a little money, I mean, you're going to spend the money anyway, guys. You might as well spend it on the stuff that counts. Uh, PFPX. PFPX is fantastic, and if you get the Top Cat add-on, which is just a couple of bucks more, like eight, ten bucks more, um, it adds in all the fuel, all the weights, all your 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 zero fuel weights, your center of gravity, your trim calculations, all that stuff. It's fantastic. It's a little expensive, but I tell you what, you'll use it enough to make it worth it. I use it every time I fly, and I don't have to. You know, BA gives me my flights. They sent me a PDF and say, "Here you go. This is exactly what you do." You put this much, you know, fuel in the plane, blah blah blah. You're carrying this many passengers, this much cargo, this many John Smiths, this many infants, you know, whatever, and off you go. But I still run it through PFPX anyway. So we're not allowed the, to cheat our, uh, our cheat our routes. We have to fly the routes that we're given. So yeah, it was funny the other day. I was watching. I saw uh, it was uh, VAT sim, but it was air traffic control, and I was like, oh, I'll check this out. This seems interesting. Yeah. He was air, he was air traffic control for Cork. He yeah. had one flight in three hours. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's too bad too because it, it, it's it's rare you get air traffic over Ireland. Like I'll get when I come in from JFK when I do the blue ribbon route from JFK to Heathrow. I'll get obviously there's almost always somebody on Vats in America doing JFK. Usually many people, which is cool. Um, but you rarely get. ATC anywhere further. Like you won't get any from Canada. You hardly ever get any from Ireland. And Shannon is the last ETOPS point. Shannon is the diversion point. If the weather is too bad and you can't fly into Heathrow, you got to land at Shannon. And or if you're having you know engine trouble, or if you're running out of fuel or whatever, you got to divert to Shannon. But there's never any ATC. So uh, go figure. The one night I'm not flying, you know, that they have ATC, and it's got to be boring. I didn't. I, I've been on Vatsim a long time, and I could take all my controller tests, but I don't have no interest. I don't want to control. Oh gosh, we leave you in control. Listen, I take that, flying that could, very that, seriously. That could be well, no, that could be either very strict or very. Well, it would be it would be right. It would be done or, right. Yeah. The thing about Vatsim, you got to remember is is that a lot of people on Vatsim are not. They're putting in the work. They're 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 learning while they're doing it. So you know, gentle correction is the way to go. Now, Pilot Edge, on the other hand, where these people are actual real life ATC, one hundred percent professional, even though they're training, this is a serious deal. And man, when I flew out of uh, LAX the other day to fly back to Heathrow, I was terrified. I'm like, I'm gonna say something wrong, and and I'm gonna have this lovely California, probably twenty year old girl, explain to me what I did wrong. <laughs> And I've been flying longer than she's been alive. <laughs> but she's going to tell me that I did something wrong. Luckily, I got it all right and everything. And I talk really fast when I do ATC. So I don't think she had time to sort of process all my screw-ups anyway. Yeah, I'm actually going pretty fast for this plane. 
Uh, ground speed is three uh, 325 knots. Yeah, ground speed means nothing. You guys know that. How yeah, I know. You, how fast are you going, Moon Dog? I can't quite see it. 210. 210 re, uh, yeah, it was. You just opened up another window. Oh, there yeah, you go. I, <laughs> I was like, what just happened? Yeah, indicated uh, airspeed's 210. In, indicated it's 210. Uh, uh, true airspeed's 306. 306. Yeah, indicated to it when it matters. Yeah. Two uh, tens moving right along for this plane, though. I mean, she'll, you know, she's up twenty two thousand feet. Hopefully, you remember to pressurize the cabin there. Uh, with that. There we go. We'll look down there. What does that say? All right. I don't. Do, oh, you were doing that as I was coming in, right? I forgot. Three, three, yeah, After you're already over ten thousand feet, yeah. No, and I was under. In the back. I was under. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I'm at twenty three six. Are you guys landing at a real airport or is it some little regional? No, uh, Cairo oh, International. Oh, Cairo International. Oh, I saw. Oh, I just looked at the title of the stream. Sorry, right. I think he has sixty. Listen, do 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 us a favor though. We appreciate the subs, but we'd rather have you know if you want yeah. to sub once, yeah, not no, a whole bunch of times to all of us. I, I'm not going no. to do the whole. Uh, I've got fifty thousand subs in three days. I'm the best. At, <laughs> oh, you're gonna say it out loud? Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm the best uh, flight sim. Uh, no, I'm not going to even go there. So no. no, fastest growing flight sim YouTuber in the world. You no, notice no. Uh, uh, our homie hasn't been around for the last couple of like. No, weeks. that's fine. Well, you got you in know trouble. why? You, you don't. You don't. You don't mess don't with say, the monkey show. You don't say something that you're going to regret. And I'm sure. not. Even if I did start to grow like that, I wouldn't say anything other than go. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank it. I, I, it's wonderful. Exactly. And you do this because it's fun. The minute it stops being fun, stop doing it. If you do it for any other reason, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. So I'm enjoying it. But what I found out was I was I plopped into a video while I was just doing something else of mine, and I was trying to stomach my own voice. And then I found out my voice isn't on that stream. You're trying to stomach my voice. No, your voice is fine. <laughs> I'm trying to stomach. Mine wasn't on there. Why? Because I had screwed up OBS and it wasn't recording it. So that you was know, the first thing I did before I started. You guys have been doing this long enough now that you should be able to stand the sound of your own voice. Damn. I can. I still cannot stand the sound of my own voice. See, I think Zig's got that. Z Zig's got that. Just sort of, just barely a little bit of twang going on, smooth and silky. I think Zig should talk more. He should, yeah. but he's trying to get his flight sim going. Yeah, my shit's broke. Sorry. My shit's broke. There you go. <laughs> wow. You know, you know something's up when Zig swears. Like, I... I Zig just took off his collar and said, "All right, I'm going to stop being a preacher for a minute because I got to sweat." <laughs> my my antivirus thinks my Easy Doc camera is yep. malware. All of a sudden, yep, yep, you got to turn. Yep, it happens to me every time too. All my add-ons, Easy Doc, play, oh, Chase Plane is even worse. Jesus, <laughs> because Chase Plane is all. That's what Draco was just saying a little Chase, bit ago. Chase Plane is all XML, so of course your antivirus is like, "Oh, we can't have that." I'm like, "You're killing me there." And every time BA connects. Like, I, I sometimes I forget to turn my antivirus off. And every time BA connects with their telemetry to make sure I'm actually, you know, physically at the computer, sometimes it'll kick me out, though. And I'm like, shit, no, 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 no. Now I get two hours of explaining why I didn't finish this flight. God damn it. I think Draco sounds pretty good, you know? I mean, he doesn't have the suave radio voice that I have. <laughs> it, it's weird that it just mysteriously started happening tonight. I don't know if the antivirus updated or something. Yeah, maybe. The, the whole interface is new, so it's updated at some point. Yeah. Well, you might have to go through the settings and whitelist every, like, it's it, like you don't necessarily want to whitelist XMLs because they could be malware. Right. But since all the games we play basically run on XML, I can't even run Farm Sim with my virus. On. Oh, really? Yeah, it won't even load. I've, but this is the first time I've ever had a problem with that. But Zig's didn't just say, hey, there's an issue. It, it quarantined it. completely isolated it from the rest of the computer. Wow. So it's okay. not letting the easy doc load up. Load and, up, right. Yeah. And I got used to it now, so it's a... Oh, it's a, it sucks to fly without it. Like, I'm just getting used to, <laughs> I'm just getting used to Chase Plane, and Chase Plane is very, very good. But I'm still not 100% used to it yet. I still, I like, I remember all the things, like how to change views in easy doc, and I still have to hunt for the stuff in Chase Plane, but... Chase Plane's still in beta, isn't it? Or did it move to alpha? Oh, I have no idea. Drake Thank up. you, Evan. These guys are these guys are amazing. Oh. E Evan thinks your your voice sounds the best, so I would, you know, 
once you have that operation, you'll be just fine. <laughs> uh, just call him the Mo Draco when he mentioned that. He mentioned that once, and it now it's a constant thing. Just call him the Mo. You know, welcome to the welcome to, to the Mo's the Mo Flies African tour from Benghazi to Cairo. So, oh, I, on I, a I side note, around. while I think about it, uh, Orbix is on sale, fifty percent off. See? Good, because I, I actually got. <laughs> I actually got paid some of my actual pay that I was required to get, so. Cool, can I have some? <laughs> Just, kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I know, but I, f I feel like I'm so happy that I got something that I'm passing it out to individual people, so. Maybe you should, you know, do, do like, I don't know, buy food with it. No, Maybe that's what not. I did. That's quite yeah. literally. I got, I got paid, and I'm like, first thing I did was actually go up to my dad's and, with putting gas in my vehicle so I could get there, so he could give me some more food money come back and yeah so I'm quite literally at that point but I've got jobs lined up through the end of next week and then oh. once our stream's done I actually want to uh, in the next day or two catch with Zig because he's the actual kitchen and bath design type person right. you got the lady that's I'm doing the work for which is actually the daughter of the computer store guy she's like she hates her kitchen I want to blow this wall out and move the kitchen out three feet. And I'm like, well, there's an issue with that. What? There's no foundation there. Well, do you need that? <laughs> well, minor I mean, details. You know, well, yes. <laughs> generally don't float by themselves sometimes. You know, if you get lucky, I guess you could take a chance. Well, I mean, if it's seven days to die, you, you right. can yeah. get that. Or Minecraft, then that'll be fine. But... Yeah, you can yeah, just build I'm... out in the space. And I'm trying to explain. Well, no, it'll be fine for about three weeks, and then once it starts to settle, and you get cracks in the walls, and then you call a bitch and complain that there's cracks in the walls, then you'll go, "Why well, there's a foundation that's needed?" And then I'm like, on top of it, that project a little bit bigger than what Moondog can do. So, um, just grab like eight, ten cinder blocks, stack it out there, <laughs> and and then just build on top of that. It'll be fine. I mean, God. what's the worst that could happen? No, you don't understand. She actually spent money for this bathroom that they're doing, and Zig's going to laugh his head off here in a second. The guy that did the tile work put the floor in the shower stall perfectly flat. Oh, that works awesome. Whoops. <laughs> right. There, she's got puddles because it won't drain, and the guy brought her a squeegee to clean her floor. So it's so instead of making <laughs> instead of making her a bathtub floor he, or a shower floor, he made her a pool. Yeah, a waiting pool. I mean, yeah. It, I nice mean, it runs down and all that, but it doesn't clear out the correct way. And it's like, and the tiles she, they used was fine, but he suggested her get the tiles that they put in for the floor. And it's like, those tiles aren't going to really work the best on the floor because they're not. You're not going to get the slope down like you wanted in the pattern that he did. So it's like. So you guys are now. Now it's starting to get very esoteric, and I don't. BP, not much of a craftsman, don't really understand. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's oh. fine, but. Zig's going. I, I oh, bought, gosh. Wa water runs downhill. Well, water I get that. Zig, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Zig, for pointing that out to me. Yes, I know that. You know why I know that? Because I'm below my septic tank. And when my septic tank was clogged up and all my, sh and all the, and luckily it was my own shit that came flying right. out of the drain and into my washing machine. Yeah, water definitely yeah. flows downhill. No. Well, at but. least, at least you learned that, right? I'm I will not, be right back, gentlemen. I'm not much of a, I'm not much of a craftsman. Oh, if you took a look at the house, you'd be able to tell that. Um, my thing is cheap and make sure it doesn't fall down. That's really all I'm concerned about. No, nah, but, you know, when she's doing stuff like that, and then it's like, well, she goes, well, what if I put the dining room in here, or the kitchen in here, which is the dining room? I'm like, you have a better shot at that than blowing out the wall in the front of the house. And she goes, well, really? she's dog. Okay. It sounds like she's got some big ideas. And big ideas usually translate into big money. Well, she does, no. and but at the same point, I know that it's going to be big money, and I sort of know her current income. She can't do it all at one go. So it's like mm. at the same point, I got to go, this is what you can do, and then we'll move on. Because they don't even technically own the house. They're renting it, but they're renting it from her future father-in-law, who will at some point probably sell it to him. So, the, that the, line of relation there is getting confusing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's like every I, so often, like Moondog will go off on one of these stories, and I'm sure it happens to him with me too when I do it. But after a while, all you hear is, mm. <laughs> and you know, you wait for the end and hope you didn't miss too much. You can make an intelligent comment at the end and say something like, "Oh, grapefruit, yeah." Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I got to throw a roof on my dad's place uh, next week. Oh, I'm glad you decided to fly over the desert, Runak, because it's really exciting to watch. I know the desert's awesome, isn't it? Well, which which way were we going to go? We were able to go desert with uh, coast, or we could go straight into Africa over desert. Right. We figured yeah, into Cairo no... where we could maybe catch pyramids on the way and then go down that way. Uh, yeah, you should see something. You should, you're going to be flying over Luxor. You should see. Yeah. You should probably see the Great Pyramid. That's what I was. Thinking Did you see the Coliseum? Had... And you got oh, you got no. Oh, you guys flew into the wrong Rome Airport. You didn't see that. You didn't have the Coliseum on approach coming into no, Rome. No. You? no. But... You should have flew, flew into the other one. You would have. Well, at some point we still got to fly into Innsbruck because Roy was the only oh, one to suggest flying in there and we flew uh, in there a couple of times but not on the stream yet so in Innsbruck on a nine right RNAV approach oh that is it's not going to be hard in these you got to do it in a big plane you got to do it no 757s if you're going to do it and let me know when you're going to do that because I'll come in with my 747 and, and do it with you well we we did it in um Basler's or, or no C-47s and yeah, it's still it wasn't that enough. difficult no you got to do it in a big plane where you look out the window and you're like hmm that mountain is getting awful close to that engine. <laughs> <laughs> you, it is. It is. It is so much. It may not be. It's. It's sort of. I guess it's a little overrated because it's been done so many times, right? And there's so much published approach information on it that you can just nail it every time if you really paid attention. But there's always that minute when you make that hard left turn and you're like, mm, "Did I overcook it? Did I come in too shallow? Did I?" You know. Kai Tech was like that too. Flying into Kai Tech Airport before they closed it down, that was a fantastic approach. Right, you're ten feet. Your landing gears, your, your wheels are ten feet above the city buildings. You're looking for the checkerboard nailed to the side of a hill, you know, uh, somewhere. That was a great approach. Now the airport's closed. You don't fly in there anymore. But, but if you want to do Innsbruck, let me know and I'll come in with a, you know some big plane. Maybe I'll do it in a seven fifty seven too. We'll do that. Um, we'll plan that one out. And uh, that's the last time we did that. We did was it the Basler that we did it and um this is after zig and i already did it once we landed no problem second time all three of us flew in there and someone didn't quite land at the front end of the runway they landed towards the end and it wouldn't stop and i went through the river <laughs> but the best part was is that he just didn't go through like the river and then just kind of skip he hit the other side of the river bank and ricochet back up in the air. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll happen. <laughs> flight sim, flight sim, ground physics. You know. Yeah. So then I, I can... flew up, and then I had to make a sharp right, ninety degrees pivot, and try not to bank off and bounce off that mountain. And then I did finally land. But in I... all fairness, though, you were following the um, the GPS approach in, and it had you starting uh, about ready to land in the middle of the city. Yeah. It. it I then. Yeah, you got to follow that to yeah. do that right, to do that approach right, because it's an RNAV approach and it's really, it's really visual. I mean, once you get, once you get configured, you want to be visual. If you're not visual, you gotta, you gotta call off. You know yeah. what I mean? Go around and get visual and wait for the weather or whatever, because there's no ILS. The ILS approach in Innsbruck is easy. Anybody can do that. You know, and that RNAV is fantastic. Though I love that approach. I've done it a bunch. Of, I don't fly in Innsbruck, unfortunately. You know, with BA, but I've done it with my 747 just because it's fun. And she just about fits in there, so we had just enough clouds that it made it interesting. Yeah. Well, it was it was raining, fine, and then it would break up, and then it would yeah cloud over, and then it would rain. I mean, we don't do anything where there isn't rain. It's I'm surprising because this is a desert. It's I was not just raining. gonna say it's probably not gonna rain here, Mudak. Well, <laughs> no, no, for it's most... be a freak storm will come off the Med Mediterranean any minute, and. <laughs> Well, virtually every single flight we've done since we started off in um, Spirit of St. Louis, we've run into storms. Yeah. We ran into storms at Akron Can. We ran into storms at Boston. Well, it's going <laughs> to, if it's, if it's storming, if you're running real weather and it's storming somewhere in the world and you're flying there, well, it's, you're going to get that weather. Right. Right. Oh, right. Well, what was funny, though, is when we landed, was it Rotterdam we, land, we landed in? Oh, it's always fucking raining. It, it, yeah. it, 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 Amsterdam ship all. I've never been in there once when it wasn't raining. Well, the funny thing was is that Moondog and Zig had never landed um, IFR. Yeah, I, I have only done it a couple of times, so I was somewhat familiar with it. And watching us three monkeys trying to land IFR. Are you, in, you? Do you mean ILS coming in on the ILS? Following. No, we had to file an IFR because uh, VFR you could only fly in IFR. They wouldn't allow you to fly in. 
Right, uh, VFR. Too, many, too many clouds. You and can't. then you had to uh, come in with ILS and all that. It was entertaining, you, to say the least. You'd be the only people I've ever seen have a hard time flying ILS. No, I've, ILS I've, is I've, the boringest thing. I mean, I do it, obviously, but it's because you can't really. I mean, I've gone visual in the 747. I usually take off. I just take over at about 1,000 feet. Because after 12, 13 hours in the chair, that's about as, that's about as much as I want. You know, I, the 747 will happily land itself. I click a button, put the auto throttle off, and it'll happily land itself. But I don't, I don't know. Well, the thing I is, I was... Too much automation. <laughs> well, the thing is, I was flying this plane, so there is no auto landing. It was, right. you know, take over. And it wasn't like a, like a regular rainstorm. I mean, we were getting buffeted around pretty good, getting, uh, you know, blown way off course and everything trying to land and sure. you know at least they had the gps so it was helping them but i had to do it all i had to do it all by hand and it was not well not that's something what, i care to repeat that's what's cool about the flight director though you keep the purple line you know in the center of the in the center of the purpose and ride that in of course you guys are you guys are cowboys you'll land in a four cross when even though this thing's probably you know only rated at 25 knots or whatever Whereas most people are like, nope, hell with this. I'm going around. I'm going to divert, come back when the weather's better or whatever. Oh, yeah, we're rebels. He's like, nope, going to land it no matter what. Oh, <laughs> like you're carrying human organs or some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, More than once I've heard Zig say, I'm landing wherever the hell I want. The hell with what air traffic control says. <laughs> Zig's been known to land at the wrong, the wrong, wrong airport no, no, before. The, the, no, that was me. That's Draco. Oh, that was you that landed at the wrong airport. Zig's right. been known to land on the taxiway and in the grass. Me yeah, too. that's... Yep, that happened. Not in a while, but it has happened. Me too. In a Cessna, I put it right down in the grass, close enough. <laughs> Cessna close can enough. land in the grass. But I was, I was proud of Zig though. He did do a belly landing and did not cartwheel it. <laughs> Forget to put your gear down. That was a joke for a while. I, when I first started, I, I had a problem remembering to do that. See, that's why they have checklists, boys. That's why you have a before before landing checklist to make sure all your shit's set right. Well, well, see that that's the cool thing with that c47 it has a checklist and it'll do the call outs so we're yeah, starting to get a, a, sort of a list going and we're at i think i'm applying the, it in my the plane. list is short on some of the ga aircraft there's not yeah, much sure. to do and, yeah, and that flaps. was when i that was when i went from like the sky lane or whatever that one is where the gear is always down to one yeah. where you had to put the gear down so there were several landings i just kept forgetting i was so excited about doing other stuff right yep yeah, was Zig being new, you know, he had never flown before. I told him, you know, I would fly the Skyhawk first because the, it's yeah, slow. Skyhawk. It's Huh? Oh, that I called it a Skylane, but it was a Skyhawk. Skyhawk. Yeah, yeah exactly. I called it the 172. Yeah, cuz it's slow, it's stable, and you know, it's easy to fly. Stable my ass. <laughs> I've never had an issue with it. I hate that plane. Draco, it's, it's slow. better pilots it's... than BP. Just put it out there because we it's... watched I watched them land. No, it's too slow. How do you land a plane at walking fucking pace? There's not enough <laughs> air going over the wings to keep it aloft. I mean, I'm coming in with the Cessna at like 60 knots. I'm thinking 60 knots. Jesus Christ, I taxi faster than this. I'm well, like, the, what the hell? I can't well, the plane only it. weighs like 500 pounds. I know, I know. But see, you got to realize it's been, God, 15 years since I've flown any GA stuff. You know what I mean? I literally, I started at BA and I flew... Well, I flew the Twin Otter, a horrible payware, ver uh, freeware version of the Twin Otter, from um, London City to like Jersey, the you know the Isle of Jersey, uh, like four times a week or whatever, getting my regional uh, certification and then moving up. Whoa, that is a, I, I, I mean, I get it with this plane, but God, it's so ugly. <laughs> I jumped over to your plane there on my stream. It's the balloon. Oh, my plane. Yeah. Well, it's the C-97 with the right. uh, fuel drop on it. It's with the, the closest one we can get for his plane that's sort of freeware. It, it at least gives a visual that's close instead of saying a 747 or... Yeah. A glider. Know, a glider. A glider, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, the, the KC-97 and the C-97 are just the military versions of this plane. Right. Well, the KC is the tanker. Right. Yep. There's a lot of them still cruising around, too. I think over my house every day. I only live about 20, no, not even, as they, the way they fly, probably 12 miles from Westover Air Force Base, uh, which is the second biggest Air Force Base in New England. So that's where they, 
I don't know. I guess the, the Stratocruiser is just an acquired taste. I think it's a really beautiful plane, but, you know, other people think it's just ugly looking, but... It's all in what you like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's the cool thing about it, it, any of these things, you know what I mean? Tractors, trucks, whatever. You know what I mean? I have a whole discussion on my stream today about Scania T's. Oh, well, Scania T's are ugly. No, they're not. I mean, you may think they're ugly, but I don't. I think they're great. They're my favorite truck. So, you know, you get to, you get to have your opinion about what you like and what you right. don't like, you know? And I will like, voice right now, I prefer the Scania T over <laughs> the flat-nosed Scanias and DAFs and all that. But... Well, I, have you just because I'm used new, to... have, have you seen the the next gen Scanias, the R's and the Streamlines? Oh, no. they're pretty sexy, I gotta say. But then again, I like driving the flat Freightliner cab over yeah. ATS. So it's quite literally, yeah, yeah. it's a. Perfect it's funny. Truck. I do the same thing. I have a Scania T with a nose in Euro in Euro truck and an American truck. And right now, I'm driving a, a Kenworth uh, K200, which is a, a cab over. Over, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm checking, I'm checking out your plane right now, Moondog. For some reason, you got a lot of right rudder going. Do I? Uh, yeah, not, no. according, not, not according to his HSI. His HSI says he's level. Yeah, I'm just going by what I'm just going by what I'm seeing. It's showing a lot of right rudder. Yeah, and you were sort of pointed nose down. It lights FS well, join it's... is a whole lot better than FS cloud. Well, no, I am pointed down a little bit. My because uh, I have an autopilot on, it has me pointed at uh, negative two point one degrees. But that's yeah, because of how I'm loaded. On Moondog stream, it's his rudder straight. Oh, his rudder's level. Right back. <sighs> yeah. Yep. Well, no, I, I'm at sixty viewers in, or subs in, on uh, there, and if they're duplicates, I'd like them to be removed. I'd like it to be honest. But I appreciate the thought. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a restart here. I'll be back. All right. Okay. Well, it's like we lost all the conversation there. I'm at twenty-two thousand feet. We're, you're just ahead of me a bit, and I'm doing two ten. So you're. Um, just I'm at two ten. I'm at two ten, but I'm at twenty-three six. Twenty-three six. I mean, I can and, catch up to you by just nosing down a little bit, but... Right. Well, I am... I could probably... Six, I'm, I'm probably about 59 miles from first waypoint. 59? What is... Uh, mine says 84, actually, so... What I'll do is double this. Check. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm probably like 56... Or, well, now I'm probably more like 56... 57 nautical miles. Up this. Oh, you could definitely increase some speed. But once again, I'm doing rough estimates by my paper nav chart that I ha that comes with this plane. Got to pay more attention to chat, Moondog. Did you see what uh, what Evan wrote? He's your he's your little he's a little fanboy, huh? Good for you. Yeah. All right, this yeah. has been awesome. You guys, you're amazing, and not enough people I, know I about. I did see that. I did see that. Yes, uh, I I agree. We should have a whole lot more people, but at the same <laughs> point, I don't want the same person forty two times. It's nice. I appreciate the thought. And I mean. And to be don't honest, get us wrong, the, we the appreciate each and every single one of you. It. Yeah. Well, I'm already famous, but thank you. No, I mean, <laughs> wow, that was an asshole thing to say. Yeah, that it. was, but the whole month, I mean, David, who does a good, very good job, he's very good at everything he plays game-wise. Farm manager. Oh, and he never streams. Whatever. I would stay yeah. with stream because he can't talk. He, he's, he's like you guys. He hates the sound of his own voice. You guys are in the wrong business then. <laughs> uh, damn, you guys are in the wrong business. I, I, watched, get used to your I, I watched his ETS or ATS. It was like four hours of nothing but the sound in the, the truck sound, mm -hmm. which is fine if you like the sound of the truck. Um, yeah. Cavalier Roy, he deserves a oh, he's another one. Yeah, yeah, but um, he never talks either. Uh, Kevin, if he uh, starts streaming, which he said he yeah. was interested yep. in doing that. Yep. You know, Once he gets all... healed up, he's gonna yeah. be he's gonna be streaming, and he's got a great he's got a great accent too. A little hard to understand, but. You, it's a little more, it uh, a little more English. Let's just put it that way. I think. Um, yeah. Due to the it, different dialects there. Right. Um, but 
Yes. I, I turn on my videos yeah. long enough to make sure I can hear what I, uh, you know, everything sounds good, and then I turn it off. I don't. I'm getting used to it. It's fine. It's just it's not the voice that I hear in my head. So it's just getting used to what it actually is. Um, you know, Frito's fun. hard to understand, and he, that's just because he's out there with all them others in Oregon and Washington talking to the Weirdos. Yeah. Uh, so I, I officially became a part of the Monkey Show today. I streamed for about 11 minutes today with my mic on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking away, and then Travis popped into the chat, and he was like, oh, Peter first. He's like, BP, if you're talking, we can't hear you. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Really, I was already like 20 minutes early. I had everything loaded up, restream was up, everything was running, and I'm talking away, doing my intro and everything. And then it, Peter's like, "BP, are you talking? Because we can't hear you." Crap. <laughs> yep. Here we go. Oh, and I never mute my mic ever, but I was no, doing. No, no, we my... can we can hear when you stomp off and scream and rant and raven. Oh God, yeah. I don't mute my mic. It's part of the show. But I muted it because I was doing a set of Corso. I was doing the next round of my custom championship, and I don't want to. Like, I don't want to talk during those because I'm trying to race, and I don't want to keep the mic open. Even though I don't talk, it'll still pick up the sounds of me grunting and sweating and swearing at the AI and everything. So, <laughs> right. you, so I just mute that it. You want, that you want as, as it looks to me as the race, the car, your point of view. You don't want yeah. to be injecting anything other than no. that. Like, God damn, that son of a bitch. You don't want no, that. I, no, but, no, but then I'm, again, you know, that would add a little bit of realism because how, I mean, real race car drivers, how much do you think they swear at the other drivers? And You know what's funny, though? I, I can tell you from experience that having spent, you know, multiple thousands of hours in a race car, in a virtual race car, that it's funny. It, it depends on the situation. When I'm, like, if I'm doing something with iRacing or one of my leagues and I'm running a long race, there'll be hours where I won't say a word and somebody will come on and be like, you know, Johnny, okay? Yeah. Car's good, yep. Because I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk. I'm focused, you know what I mean? And that's if I'm just screwing around doing something, I'll talk. But when I'm racing, I don't nope, I'm focused on the car and what it's doing and what I'm doing. I don't have time to be entertaining. Right. So that's why I don't I, I couldn't stream I, like I couldn't record my flights either. Cause like, well, what do you if somebody would ask me in chat, what are you doing? I'm watching a movie. <laughs> Plane's <laughs> flying itself. I don't need to do anything. You know I'm what I mean? I'm monitoring. Plan. I, I'm watching Police Academy on Netflix. What 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 do you think I'm no, doing? The yeah. other night, the other night when I flew from when I flew from um, LAX to Heathrow, I got it. I got up to the cruise, got up to thirty thousand feet, got up to the cruise, got a little VAT sim over uh, the East Coast, and then did my check in, did my ETOPS, my position reports, my fuel reports, and all that. Had six hours over the Atlantic. I put on I put on Grand Tour on Amazon Prime and watched that all the way into the approach to Heathrow. Occasionally, would look over at the plane. Yep, still in the air. Good. Yep. <laughs> how long? How long of a flight was that for you from LAX to Heathrow? Uh, with with the queue at LAX because Vatsim America or Vatsim California was having an event, at, and then uh, with the queue coming into Heathrow early morning like that, about thirteen hours. Thirteen Damn. hours. Yeah, but that's. I thought I thought six and a half from Canada to Cork was long. That's three. That's three and a half on each side. You know, so the flight over wasn't bad at all because I'm, I mean, I'm cruising, I'm flying with the prevailing winds and the weather was good. The weather was fantastic all the way across the United States. Got, you know, got overcast as you got over Ireland, like it always does. Just completely blocked out coming into Heathrow. Couldn't see anything. Couldn't see the runway till I, till the damn back wheels touched down, you know, but the weather was fantastic. So I didn't have to do anything. No buffeting. Didn't have to slow down. Didn't have to change course. You know, just file my ETOPS reports over the ocean, check in with BA every two hours, and watch the Grand Tour. It was great. So, and people so ask me, they're like, well, what? They're like, well, what's the challenge in that? Well, I've already done all the challenging bits. I've done all that. You know what I mean? The, the I've challenging done all bit that. is not being asleep when yeah. call me, check on me. <laughs> the challenging bit is, you know, is to, is to, is to simulate what real-life pilots do. Real-life pilots will spend 10 hours in the plane, and then they have to get up and be in a non-responsible position out, off, out of the chair for at minimum four hours, which generally means going up into the crew rest area and having a meal and, you know, sitting down on the bunk or having a nap or whatever. Well, I can't do that. So, you know, the challenge is for me is to, is to be in the chair for 12, 13 hours. So that's how I have, you know, nearly 12,000 hours with BA. So, and I enjoy it. I mean, I love my plane. I, I know the 747 inside and out. So, 
the virtual one. I'm not saying I could sit down in a real one and fly it because I couldn't. But but I I fully enjoy it. Oh, I just become such a snob. I need to do other things in flight sim. It's such a waste. You know, it wouldn't surprise me though if like on long flights, pilots aren't pulling up like like little portable DVD player setting them up somewhere and they're well, sitting there watching them. I can tell you that in a real flight, there is a lot more that you're supposed to do. Like we have, we have um, what's called procedural outlines on BA, right? For each plane. And now somebody's actually going through the trouble of making them for each route, you know, that we fly. So, and, and it's, it's pages and pages and pages of stuff that you could do while you're flying these long haul flights. You know, navigation calibrations, position reports, fuel reports, you know, checking on engine temperatures and engine performance and all this other stuff that you could be doing while you're on these long flights. But the problem is, is that while, yes, in my, in my plane's case, all that stuff is modeled, I can't be arsed. You know what I mean? I, I just want to make sure that all the gauges are, you know, green and the plane's flying in a, you know, basically straight line. So I know there's guys in BA that, that do it, though, that do every bit of everything that a real pilot would do. And don't think that the real pilots, like my 747 has a tablet built into it, right? And I can pull up things from my computer on a tablet. And don't think real pilots don't do that, too. I don't oh, think sure they're over there not watching, you know, Top Gear or whatever. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, even if they have all that, you know, a 13-hour flight, I mean, yep. I'm sure they get that all done within, like, what, 30 minutes or so? Yeah, usually, usually by the time you get up into the cruise, once you're fully established in the cruise, you're pretty much done doing anything. You're pretty much done having any interaction with the plane unless something happens uh, for the next however many hours. So then you're just monitoring the systems, um, and, which can be challenging the, in itself. The comment of, wow, this is awful boring. Well, a good flight would be boring, right? Exactly. You didn't exactly. crash. You didn't have any instances. You didn't exactly. have nothing to cause you to go, oh, crap. The good, so the, the good flights know, are the boring yeah. ones. Yep, that's that's very much what your passengers want to hear. That it was a boring flight. Yes, thank you. But, oh. And we, we joke around where you go, oh crap, and then Draco goes, that's just what the pilot, you know, the passengers want to hear is the pilot going, oh crap, <laughs> or right. where are we? No, the, be <laughs> the best one we? is the best one is when you walk in the back of the cabin and ask the cabin crew to make you a drink. Oh, <laughs> I'll have another gin and tonic, thank you. Oh. But, you know, I was watching this one YouTube channel. It was about, you know, it. they actually had, like, a real cameraman in there filming, mm. you know, actual airline flights. Yep. Anyway, in the middle of one of the flights, it was a 747. One of the engines went out <laughs> when it was getting ready to – it It wasn't quite on uh, on final to um, – I'm wanting to say it was uh, Berlin. Yeah. Or something like that in Germany. Anyway, they declared an emergency, said that they, that they were losing an engine and they're going through emergency procedures. They needed priority landing. Yeah. Air, the air traffic controller in Berlin uh, told them that they had a, that they had three other planes ahead of them. Please circle. Well, you can. You know what though? One engine in a seven forty seven is nothing. It means nothing. A seven forty seven, the seven forty, especially the GE engines and the Rolls Royce ones that are on my plane are powerful enough that it will lift a 747 from a dead stop to 30,000 feet in the cruise at 500 knots on one engine. So the other three are just sort of, you know, ballast. Now, it does unbalance the plane having one engine, but you just shut it off. You know what I mean? And you can definitely land and you can definitely sit in the hold as long as you have fuel. As long as it's not on fire and it won't go out, it's really not a massive... I, I've, I've simulated failures in my plane occasionally because somebody will... Uh, will private message me on Batsim and say, we're working on emergency procedures with this guy. Can you, you know, simulate this emergency? Sure. You know, what would you like me to do? Well, how about a landing gear failure? Mm, I can turn off an engine. <laughs> but <laughs> landing gear failure, I don't feel like trying to belly land a 747 today. I'm not really into it. I've been in the chair too long or whatever. And I've done it for him, you know, um, badly, I should point out. But skip the best thing is when you fly it down the runway. Yeah, well, what you do is you 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 come in you come in basically at full power, right? Yeah. All the engines screaming, and as soon as you're over the threshold, idle, full reverse, air brakes all the way out, right? And you're just you're mashing that yoke forward as hard as it'll go to get the nose to hit first, 
because if the front of the plane breaks off, you're less likely to kill everybody in the back. That's the correct procedure to do that. Um, I'm not sully. I'm not just going to glide it down with no landing gear and just kiss it, you know. But the, Vatsim, the, the, the guy on Vatsim was, was working on his emergency certification. And, you know, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help. You know, just don't ask me to do anything too ridiculous because I've been flying for a long time. Yeah. You make That's why they're in yet. Um, yeah, basically it was flip from nav one to nav two and keep flying straight. Okay, I I, I was just wondering because I'm about nineteen from it, so. Listen to you guys. You're starting to sound like pilots. You better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Zig's fault. Is it not my fault? Well, no, it ain't my fault. fault. No, you're fault? the one. You're the one that kept going. Well, I want you know what's chart. You know, what's ILS for this place? What's the correct uh, landing direction? He's the one oh. that's been very specific on all this. So we just sort of you know. You guys should get a Navigraph subscription. Navigraph is fantastic. That's the way to go. Up to date, current, real world nav aids, real stuff. Um, and if you get sim, if you sign up for Simbrief. You can always update your the Simbrief navigation with the latest navigation from Navigraph, and it's not expensive. It's, it's actually pretty cheap. And if you get the full package, I think it's forty five dollars a month or whatever, and I think it's probably even cheaper than that now. Um, you get the full package. You get access to everything, training and charts, and I mean, it just just re just millions of pages of stuff. So it's definitely uh, it's definitely worth it. I just grab my phone and type in ILS for whatever airport I'm going in at, and, and that, it gives and, me all the runway yeah. ILSs. And that's fine, but a lot of times it's very out of date. Some of that stuff is very, very old. Yeah. And depending on how new your plane is, if your plane is 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 programmed with a, a more current nav data, you'll never, you know what I mean? You'll be like, well, I'm 30 degrees off, right? Because, you know, the nav data is saying it's here and my plane is saying it's there. Which is probably why Draco has a few times been 30 you, miles east or west of Ziggy well, because he's following same, different VORs or the same VORs due to that plane. Well, you also have to figure, too, I'm following radio, where you guys are following VORs, but your VORs are built into your GPS, so your GPS is more That's accurate true. than radio VOR is. Well, Doug, you know you don't got to adjust that cabin pressure, right? It'll adjust automatically. You only got to set it for your landing, your landing. Um, oh, okay. Altitude. Well, I was going up some, so that's why I was. You generally want you generally want to set it at like, I don't know, well, below ten thousand feet, obviously. But after that, you don't have to mess with it until you're about to land. Then you set it for your landing altitude, and then that's it. It oh. should auto. It should auto correct. Okay. Any pressurized plane will, will do that. So. Hey, you learn something new every so often. You know how many times I've forgotten to forget? Like, and, and the 747 will absolutely remind you. You know, it'd be like, you know, I'll get out master alarm saying I haven't turned the packs on. Like, mm, it's going to gonna be getting pretty cold back there. <laughs> Maybe I had to turn those on. Well, I don't know how many times I've landed and forgotten to decrease the pressure from, like, because I usually set it when I'm flying about 20,000, I usually set it at about 5,600. Yeah. And I'll land and I'll be like, oh, shit. So then I'll just hit the emergency. De a decompression and back. That's good, yeah. <laughs> Just and then and then have the have the plane cleaning crew come in and scrape everybody's brains off the inside of the. Plane. I haven't had one passenger complain yet. You know there are planes that simulate the 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 diff because what will happen is the it'll be very hard to land the plane. It, it, it's it'll be like trying to land a helium balloon. Right. You know what I mean? Because the plane will actually be bigger in space than it would be without the pressurization. So, I wonder if this plane, if this doesn't model that because I've noticed that when I forget to do that, I have a hard time. I'll float left and no. right. It does make a difference. So, it's a silly little thing. but it I never would have thought that. Yeah. Well, you got to realize that you're inside a giant tin can, right? And the air pressure is pushing against the walls of the plane makes the plane naturally more buoyant. So what's the first thing you do when you're going to land in water? And the reason I know this is because I've simulated it because we had to with BA, is you put the pressure, you put, you turn all the packs on max. And in the 747, you have, an, you have a water landing setting um, that you can set, and it just cranks the cabin full of air. Basically turns the plane into a, a helium balloon. balloon. So then it makes it easier for it to stay afloat. Afloat while you get everybody off, right. Because yeah. yep. as soon as you open the doors, obviously, all the air rushes out. 
but that also helps with passenger egress. It helps the ramps extend and all that. And it keeps the plane afloat while everybody gets out. Planes are designed to float for X amount of minutes anyway, if they're structurally sound. If right. you put them in the water and they don't break up, they're designed, they're by law, they have to float for X amount of minutes to allow the, however many people are on the plane to get off. Now, if you hit the water and the plane breaks up, well, then all bets are off and you take your chances. Yeah. But. That's one of the things I've always wondered about, like the DC three, uh, DC three, the six, and like my plane and whatnot. You know, the the prop engine planes. Yeah. When they do water landings, how often did would those props uh, snap off the hub oh, and end up come. going through the go through yeah. the well cabin? I mean, that's not so because of the way they're positioned on the wing. It, that's not so much of an issue because what happens is when you hit water, the whole nacelle, the whole engine will because the the gyroscopic effect of the prop spinning will actually rip the nacelle off and blow it away from the plane. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mostly, Ooh. or it'll rip the wings off. So that the density of the water is actually going to slow it down so fast it's going to snap and break in a position where yeah. it's not flinging it. It's right. grabbing it and holding it. Right. The only time you'd have to worry about a, a, a prop coming through the cabin is if you hit something solid. You know what I mean? Or a bird strike, even if you broke off a you know if you broke off a piece of prop, that could happen. But generally, because of the, because props you know counter rotate, they're going to spin away from the plane as opposed to into them. It's far more scary to look out your window and see one of your you know thirty five million dollar Rolls Royce engines on fire. Knowing that that's just spitting out little pieces of metal out behind the plane, bouncing off the tail and everything, ripping your rudder to shreds. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've had it. I've had that happen on this plane. I've had an. I've had an engine catch fire on me, and and you can't shut it off fast enough. <laughs> well, luckily, you know this has all, you know, um, like carb air override switches and fire extinguisher switches and all that to. Yeah, they usually put it out pretty quick on the first on the first try, but then you have to start dumping fuel out of that tank for that engine, and yeah, yeah, because now you're unbalanced because you're not using the fuel in in that engine anymore. So you got all the weight on that side, and that plane's hard to fly. And d double engine planes are very hard to fly with one engine. Multiple engine planes aren't bad on one engine. Like I could easily fly. I mean, if I say I lost an engine coming out of Heathrow going to JFK, I could easily make the rest of the trip. You know what I mean? It, it, without even really noticing that it was gone. Little reduction in speed, probably. But other than that, it wouldn't affect the plane one bit. Lost two engines? Mm, now I'm fucked. Well, you know? there's been a time I've lost... One time I lost engine engine one, and the other time I, I lost engine four. Luckily, they're both uh, the outboard engines. Yeah, which and, makes it a lot better, yeah. And, you know, and luckily I never lost two engines at the same time, but except <laughs> for a little slower speed, I really didn't notice a difference in the plane how it handled no no once i jettisoned the fuel from uh, first i would take as much fuel as i could from that tank and pump it into the other three engines and yeah. then jettison the rest and then fill out all the paper all the environmental paperwork while you <laughs> while you jettison <laughs> kerosene all over the environment well they don't mind if you get have a good enough excuse i oh, just they, felt they like do it. mind <laughs> They do mind. Oh. Well, I just felt like doing it for practice, especially when it aeros when it when it goes aerosol and it drips down like rain. And kids are <laughs> outside playing. Mommy, the rain smells funny. Oh. <laughs> it's right over the uh, old ridge, and then you have that farmer down there pissed off that it's now. No wonder my <laughs> no wonder my problem. pH is so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got cows down here. You just. Or just, or it lands all over his uh, his hay field, and just as he's yeah. getting ready to rake, and he hits a rock, ignites. <laughs> yeah, and then Roy's got to explain it. His hand, Roy, which I can speak from experience, does happen a lot more often than you'd think. Sure, sure. not the kerosene all over the field, but no, but you, know, you hit random. a rock, get a spark in a hay field. Yeah, yeah. random sparkle set it off. It, hay sheds burn down all the time. Some spot, guy in there smoking spot. a cigarette, fucking, you know, with the hay shed, and, you know, drops his match or puts a cigarette out in a hay bale. Next thing you know. Or a cow kicks over a lantern and burns and down a city. The whole city burns down. See, I knew where you were going with that. <laughs> I saw that coming. Oh. I recognize that, but I don't know which movie. Come on. No, it's the great no, it's it's Chicago Fire. The great the Chicago, great Chicago Fire. Fire. 
Oh, okay. Miss O'Leary's, Mrs. O'Leary's cow. Remember, that's how it actually started. No, Although, did, who no. knows? Who knows how it actually started? That's the myth. You know what I mean? But who knows? It's a good myth, so we stick with it. As a matter of fact, that's how Brookfield Zoo came to be about. They built it on the rubble that they shoved out into the lake from the Sh- Chicago Fire. Oh, did they? Uh... Yep. There was so much rubble from the Chicago Fire, they actually added land to the city what, of Chicago. What year was that? It was 18-something, right? Yeah, it was, I want to say, like, eight, uh, 1880. Yeah. So Chicago was pretty, pretty well, yeah. pretty big yeah. at that point. Yeah. yeah so. But it was still all made out of wood. The sidewalks oh, right. were wood. and Yeah. Yeah. And the worst part was is that when the fire department was arriving, they had the steam pumpers that burned yeah. coal. Right. So it would throw embers as they were going, yeah. which set more buildings more, on fire. More buildings on fire, yep. That happened in New York, too. Just about a half of Brooklyn burned down in the early 1900s because of that exact thing. They had they, steam pumpers, and they were, you know, they're firing them with coal. And they'd get them so hot that the, the, the boilers would be red hot. And they'd rush down, you know, between buildings, and they'd catch a tree on fire. And then the tree would catch the building that it was next to on fire. And then that building would catch the building on. And, you know, so a small fire suddenly turns into half the cities on fire. It could still happen today. I mean, these fire engines, you know, you think about how hard a fire engine has to work, especially a pumper truck. Yeah. You know, they get they, it they overheated get really hot. and the motor yeah. gets hot and then it, the, the turbo on it goes out and sp- spews oil everywhere. And now you got oil now you fire. Got a, now your fire engine's on fire, right? Yeah. Which sadly happens a lot more than you think. It happens, yeah. I've seen it happen. I saw it happen in our local uh, our truck. Uh, we used to have a, we used to have an old. Um, I don't. It was a Dodge something or other, but they used it because we we're a very rural area where I grew up. So they used it. They used to use it to pump water out of the pond. Like we had a lot of ponds in the town, so they would get water out of whatever pond was closest to the fire, right? And uh, one time, I guess there was a big. It was a big land fire, brush fire, but they didn't want it getting across Route Twenty which is a pretty major road. So they were just constantly pumping water. And this truck was running and running and running and running for like six or seven hours. Well, somebody bothered to go back and check it. And basically, the only reason they even noticed it was there was no more water coming. Well, that's because the truck was just a big pile of molten (laughs) slag on the bank of this pond because it just literally melted down to nothing because it had been on fire. and Nobody even noticed. The funny thing was that the, the, the fire chief said, he was like, well, it had to have been burning for, for at least an hour for it to melt down this much. And it was still pumping water. That was a good truck, he says. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they knew how to build those trucks back in the 50s and 60s. It was like an old Dodge, like a power wagon, like one of the ones that you'd see, like the military used to have. Like it was probably yeah. a Massachusetts National Guard, you know, leftover or whatever. But yeah, they had that thing for, I mean, I. They, for years and years and years, as long as I can ever remember, they had that until that one fire when they just melted it down. Actually, the uh, Randolph Fire Department, where I grew up most of my life, uh, they probably had the same thing. It was one of those power wagon, uh, two hoses, uh, reels on either side. Yep. And uh, to be honest, I think they probably have it still stashed out back just in case. Just, yeah. Like our, that was our brush truck, you know. That was the thing they would bring to put out brush fires because it had the big pump on the front with a generator. Yeah. So they could just drop a, you know, the the hose into the pond, and yeah. and then run the hoses off the side of the truck. But nobody bothered to check this thing for however many hours, and you know, it just melted itself down to nothing. Well, they actually that's used how... to bring that one out to the fairgrounds for the demolition derby. Just oh, to spray case. down the yeah. To, to, spray oh. down, to spray down in case of the, you know, the cars. On got fire, over yeah. and got on fire. That was the one that they could zip up the side real quick next to it and spray down the car. Okay, all the rest of you, back to work. Hit yeah. someone. <laughs> well, when I when I was on a fire uh, on the fire department, they had what used to be their first uh, one of their frontline engines that ended up, you know, back in the seventies. But then it ended up becoming our brush truck. Anyway, one day we were we were coming back from a small little brush fire and we got a call for a house fire pulled up anyway me and two guys go in with with the hose and all of a sudden there's no water we walk out the truck just the engine just blew up on it just as we're going inside it seems work hard i mean and fire and they're expensive so fire departments keep them for a long time the town i grew up in for some reason just got a ladder truck now 
Do you have any really tall buildings that need an actual ladder truck? No. No, we don't. But the, but the police department got a jet ski in one of those like really tricked out SUVs, too. So <laughs> Did they just get a bunch of grant money and said, I don't know what to do with it. Let's go get a jet ski? It's You know what it is? The cops are just like everybody else, right? All that cops and fire departments and all that shit, it's all just look at how big my dick is. You know, the, the big city police have tanks and fucking, you know, all these rescue vehicles and, you know, the, the logistics vehicles and all that with mobile command posts and stuff. So the little towns, hey, look at this. I got a I got a Ford excursion on 40s, you know, and like, hey, look at me. That's all it is. A ladder truck. I like what what building besides maybe the junior high, which I think is still only three stories. <laughs> what possible reason could we need the little ass town of Charlton, Massachusetts need a damn ladder truck for it? Just to say we have one. That's all. North well, like, Canada has one, but that's because they have enough factories that are still only two or three stories tall, but they're long enough that that way they can get high enough to spray the water down onto. Uh, I get it, yeah. But that one makes sense, you know. The, well, we just they just wanted to spend two million dollars for no apparent reason. So, well, the had, small town that I came from in Illinois, tallest building was like a three-story tall apartment building. They went out and got a 120-foot ladder truck. Yeah, that's what this one is, I think. It's big, whatever it is. It's a big... With all whatever the, out, those... the outriggers that pop, yeah, stand it, out the side, like... and it, it becomes yeah. like a big uh, crawling insect, which is what my wife called the one, because they had it extended like that and only had the ladder partway up when she came around the corner. She goes, that looks like a big bug. It looks like <laughs> one of those big rotator uh, recovery trucks, you know, that they used to yeah. haul, like, rig, yeah. you know, semis yeah. that are stuck in the snow and shit. That's what it looks like because these big things come up the side. That whole ladder bit turns and swivels and, and everything. And it's got about a billion lights on it because ha we, we have what's called Founders Day every year. Well, they do. I don't live there anymore. But then they troop all their new shit up and down Main Street. And all the fat people from my town sit on the common and eat fried dough and watch. Ooh, look, you know. Um, and that's, but so that's when I saw it and I was like, no, why in the fuck do we need this? I'm like, well, and I said to my mother, my mother was still alive at the time. And I said, well, there's your tax dollars hard at work. I don't live in th this town anymore, so I'm not paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I think is funny now is the trend of the fire departments getting, you know, there's new trucks with so many lights on it that it'll induce an elep epileptic seizure. Oh, you know what? That you mentioned that the town there's a town a couple of towns for me uh, called Sturbridge Interesting and they story, have Interesting Brad. Brad. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, that's you're, all you're we, in the, that's all you're we in the do place is for interesting we, stories. We just talk, we get the plane, we get, we're flying, we're good and go golden and then we just talk. Um, the, so we, we do this with every game we play. Every <laughs> game we play. Whether it requires concentration or not. Um <laughs> The, Even the better town, if it that, does, does require concentration. That town, they've got, the cops have got these, you know how they have the, the white lights on the front, right, to use the spotlights uh, or whatever. And then they have the blue lights on the back. So if they're parked on the side of the road, you can see them. These things are so bright. One time I lived, they, they used to, I used to live on a road in an apartment complex. And it's a 40 mile an hour speed limit, but people always fly up and down because it's long and straight. And the cops are like, well, that's our moneymaker. So we're going to pull everybody over on this road. Well, my girlfriend at the time, my youngest daughter's mother, and me were coming back from somewhere. It was pretty late at night. And right in front of where we live, cops had pulled somebody over. But there was four of them because we don't ever do anything half-assed in Massachusetts. If, if <laughs> one cop is enough, we'll send six. <laughs> so there's four cops with those damn super bright lights. Do you know my girlfriend went off of the road into a ditch? Because she couldn't. <laughs> The road. She couldn't see. Yeah, she couldn't see, and I, I and I couldn't see, so I didn't know we were going into a ditch till the car suddenly made a complete stop. <laughs> and I'm like, "What the hell happened?" She's like, "Oh, I went off the road. I couldn't see." I'm like, "All right, are you okay?" Now Ava wasn't born yet, thankfully, but I'm like, "You okay?" Yep. So I got out of the car. Now you guys know me. <laughs> How do you suppose the conversation with the police went when I got? I, out there? I'm assuming the first forty words were swear words. Well, I got about four words out before I had four Sturbridge police with their <laughs> service revolvers pointed at my face. I was gonna say, were there tasers and handcuffs involved, or did they just go straight for the for the nine millimeter? Oh no, they went straight for the straight for the service revolvers, and they were like, "Sir, we're gonna need you to back up." And I'm like, "I'm gonna need you to call me a fucking tow truck <laughs> and an ambulance, and I'm gonna need your names, and I'm gonna need who who I'm sending this bill to to fix this fucking car." We'll see. Oh, that that's a real situation with that. I I keep. Hating the newer and newer cars coming out with the brighter and brighter LED lights, and it's like, and then the person wants to drive with their brights on. It's like I can't see when you have it on just the dims because I'm pretty good at seeing at night. I can walk down the street with no lights on and see where I'm going. You'd start putting a car that can bright up four miles ahead of it coming at me. I'm like, 
you're going to be lucky if I don't run into you because I can't see where the fuck I'm going. You know what's funny? is it, Think about that now, right? Now you wonder why the AI is so crazy in ETS too. How many lights do you have? I mean, I got a... <laughs> I mean, my truck is, you know what I mean? No wonder they, like, you never think Stu, about that. Stu, right? Stu's is a driving, blinding sun, yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like following around a, a supernova, you know what I mean? So, no wonder the AI acts so crazy. Well, that's like, have you seen uh, the new Dodge Chargers? I was, I was driving home one night and ended up behind a Dodge Charger. And it's not like a regular turn signal where it just flashes. Yeah. It actually looks like something from, like, freaking Star Trek or some shit where it actually starts the middle of the, oh, of it, the back of the car and it just kind back of and forth. Yeah, and tracks back and forth the way they're going. I'm That's like, kind of cool. Actually, the Ford Mustang who did that also a, a while ago, they're doing that to help you direct. That's why there's also the one on the mirror so that because just in case you happen to be up beside it and the person in the, is driving and wants to turn in the left lane doesn't realize you're there, they turn on the turn signal. You can see that they're coming over. That's why that's there. It's Good. Then the bastards can hit me and buy me a new car. Well, at least you then you know why they're hitting you. Well, then they'll don't know, know why I'm hitting them. I've got a, I've got a six watt light bulb in the front of my truck. I don't have shit like that. I don't have any of that fancy shit. Pretty sure it's gonna be a flashlight take to the hood. <laughs> one one on each corner so that. You oh, can... it's. You know, it's a good thing that parts for this thing are so cheap. So, uh, how fast how is fast he going? going? Not uh, fast uh, enough. Uh, Let me just put it that way. I, I, I am <laughs> registering 211 with the ground speed of 308 and true air speed of 310. I'm trying to catch Draco, who's just ahead Which of me. It all means nothing. Right. You're going 211 knots. God damn, you could walk faster. I'm doing 210. Well, you're even slower. <laughs> yeah, BP. Right about, right, right about now, I'd be going by you going with 612 <laughs> knots. See ya. But I'd be 20,000 feet ahead above. Well, no, you're fine at 23, 235. I'd probably be at over this. I'd probably be at about 30. So I wouldn't be that much higher. You'd be close enough that we would hear you come and go. Zoom. You'd okay. see me. Yeah. You'd see the, you'd see the contrails. On a, on a sky this clear? Absolutely, you'd see them. Yeah. would be doing this. What the heck is that? Okay. Gone. Or if I came down to your level and just <laughs> parked up next to you. Hey, what's going on, Mudan? <laughs> ah, that's, that's a big fucking plane. Yeah, yeah it is. Especially if you really look at this, that, that thing outside you could, is not very big. We could park you that could, in your engine yeah. bay. You could land <laughs> this on the wing of a 747. You could, yeah. So and it fit. Yes, yeah, so we're coming in on a landing from the left wing. We will be headed to the right wing, and then once we <laughs> land, we will then taxi to the tail. <laughs> How far are you out? How far are you out from the airport? Uh, at the next marker, we're 139. Uh, Total oh, right. uh, so we're past well, halfway. Actually, I just turned. Turn. I just turned turned off a DBA onto CWT. Okay. So about one one six about one hundred sixty two miles. So about a half an hour. All right. So I have time to go to the bathroom. Love you right yes, back. you have time. Oh. Yes. Um, I have it as a hundred and wait a minute. 160 miles from DVA to airport. See, I have uh, 130 miles to CWT and then 25.6 to the airport. Yeah, and the total distance was 587.6. So, I mean, we were yep. halfway actually after we made the first turn. Right. So. And I didn't pick up the next waypoint on my VOR, so I'm just going to. Yeah, I think I pick it up. Which shit, wrong button? I should actually on. Uh, actually, I one. should be on a heading of one zero five. Back up. Right. What I tend to do is set the, this one for the next one. No, one zero eight. Which is the next one, which is that one, which is seventeen ten. Double check that real quick. On the... How's it going I... there, Zig? Are you like making progress? Do you have a game and stuff going? I mean, you're not going to jump in the flight now, but. No, it's. <clears throat> I got it to where it'll stop quarantining easy, Doc, but now I have the resolution issue. Okay. I wonder it, what's causing it's... that. I don't know. It's weird. It's like it's. 
it's stuck in 1024 by 768 and when i go into the settings it says it's 920. did you try resetting all of your um your graphic settings to default in the game and redoing them by hand uh they were all to default i think in in flight sim you mean yeah in flight sim not not in rex 4 or anything like that just in flight sim well, um, Brady, I changed. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, Brady was at, you. You should do formation flying with a bunch of A three eighties. We did formation flying with the Brazzlers. Uh, the C forty sevens. C forty sevens, I believe. No, it both, was the Brazzlers. Both, actually, I think. Yeah, we yep. we've done them with both. We we've gotten fairly close with those, and held sp held speed and stuff for portion. So. Um, A380s. Maybe. We have been kicking around F18 formation flying. We thought about it. We haven't decided on that one yet. That's why I said kicking it around. Kicking it around. Uh, deciding if we want to be like flying war jets over Africa in Iran I know. at this point. You, you think that would be a good idea to fly F18s over Iran right now? Uh, let's do a formation flight of F-18s over North Korea. Scare the piss out of them. Yeah, th yeah. We'll just tell them that we're doing that, and that all negotiations with the actual North Koreans will go go to hell. Oh crap! The monkey show's flying here. We give in. Great. Now you just lost all your North Korean subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there's the sad thing. I actually have viewership from North Korea, so. Kim Jong Il, uh, Kim, uh, is it Kim Jong Il now, or I don't know. Uh, it might be. It sounds actually pretty close. Little fat Twinkie boy just got pissed and unsubscribed from you. Oh great! <laughs> <laughs> he actually means the ruler of North Korea. North not Korea. Else. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Kim Jong Un now. Un. It's un. it's it's the it's it's the un communist. <laughs> He's so communist, the other communists go, whoa, easy, <laughs> calm What's down the there. matter with this guy? He's crazy. I don't know. I don't, you know, you don't get to come into the private communist toilet anymore, you scary little man. He's so crazy, even Lenin be like, whoa. <laughs> I don't know. Lenin was pretty crazy. Stalin was the crazy. Not as bad as Stalin, though. Stalin was batshit. Stalin uh, was. He Kim, no, he Jim Jong Un. Yes, Un. Un. Yeah, the Un. un the Un lunatic. Oh. You should do formation flying with a bunch of A380s. <laughs> Why? <laughs> A380s. <laughs> Big French over inflated. Never mind, anyway. All comments <laughs> stated by BP may or may not be authorized by <laughs> GP. Dog and, yeah. Tell us what you really think about them. Okay. Kim Jong il was his father, or is his father. father. How did we get talking about the North Koreans again? Because we were talking about flying. He mentioned uh, formation flying while we were while oh. we were gone. So we were talking that we have done the C-47s, the Brazzers in formation, and we were kicking around the idea of doing F-18s. Where? Oh well, God! Yeah, North Why Korea. You... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why would you want to fly an F-18? Because it's there. No, they're miserable. Awful. Actually, we should actually, if we were to do it, seeing how we are the prop heads, we should do it in P 51s. Or the F 4U Corsair. Yeah. Don't listen to this. It's like a bunch of old men sitting around. <laughs> oh, remember back in the days when planes <laughs> had propellers? And Christ, will you guys come into the fucking 20th century? Will one of you please fly a jet eventually? I did it last uh -huh. night while I was on Light Hauler. But they're jets hard. are just so sterile and they're not though they're not they're you're just not. gonna get the right one yeah actually i was looking at that 757 the one thing that i don't like is the uh the F fms box you can hold the over the buttons but the buttons do absolutely nothing right so it's like right if i do i want to get something where i have to learn that box it's a very limited yeah. MCDU on that thing, yeah. yeah. It's very limited. You want something, I mean, uh, <laughs> you, you, you want to learn, get a PMDJ. I yeah, mean, I that's, 
Oh, you know what's you know what's a middle ground for that? A middle ground, the iFly stuff. Now it's it's very detailed. It's not quite study level, but it's pretty close, and all the systems work. And you can definitely learn. I flew a lot of hours in an iFly seven forty seven, and you can definitely learn how how jets work and how the systems work and everything else uh, with it. And they're not that expensive, and they just came out with a new update to it, and it's really good. So right. I'm one forty out from. My last waypoint, then it's a 26 mile jog over to the airport. Yeah, I'm. I just made. Or as we pilots, like 34. Say, 26 miles to run, not jog. <laughs> People jog, planes run. Okay, run. so it's a 26 <laughs> nautical mile run to the airport, and I'm 133 from that waypoint. Ooh. So. Got it. What are you flying at? Seven, eight knots. <laughs> per hours. If it's a problem for you, you know, you could go and come back in, can, what, four or five go. hours? And... You, can, you can go. It's just, you can either go or shut up. Those are your options. I'm actually Here, fine go, at point, go back there and sit point in five. Comfy leather seats, prop your okay. feet up on the table, and shut up and mock, watch a movie. Mock, mock point five. Which is half the... I'm flying at half the speed of sound right now. Right. right. What's the speed of sound, Draco? Six, seven, is it seven something? 720, if I remember correctly. Miles an hour. Yeah. What does that translate to knots? 690? No. No. Nope. Huh? Not very damn much. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> the, the speed of sound was a big deal 80 years ago. It's not so much anymore. <laughs> oh. Hell, I fly almost the speed of sound on a regular basis with an unsupersonic plane. Oh, you guys got to get, you got, one of you guys got to get the well, Concord. You want to learn shit, Moondog. Learn to fly the Concord. Then you could teach me. Okay. That we'll thing see. is insane. Um, Believe it or not, I've almost can handle it. Maybe it could. It'll it'll handle it. Actually, it'll once see. I get the new RAM in it, it will. At, and that's it's actually so... the only reason I don't have the video card because actually the guy is doing this. Because I went up, uh, Draco suggested a, a card, and I and I took it to uh, the suggestion to him. He goes, "You want to put that in that computer that I built for you? That computer is good, and you want to put that in it because it was an off name brand." What, it was what brand? That, what was that, uh, Draco? The B EVGA 1050 Ti. Did he say that EVGA was an off-brand? He said it wasn't. He didn't like the brand because it wasn't as good as. You're. I but, find a new computer guy. What the fuck is the matter with him? EVGA, EVGA is just about is, one of the best yeah, graphics well, card companies there is. They're the shit. I mean, uh, damn. So. And I, you know, he goes, well, yeah, six hundred and sixty-six point seven three knots, right? Oh, it's it's okay. it's not as big of a deal as it used to be. I I, I fly seven forty a uh, virtual seven forty seven uh, pretty much well four times a week, and I'm regularly up in the six hundred knot range. So okay, show off. Um, I have hey a, nothing eight, stopping you from flying a seven forty seven. But once again, a four engine prop plane that's like six uh, almost seventy years old. Oh, I'm saying three hundred knots is moving right along. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're up at 300 knots. No, I am okay. at 210. Now remember, your speed mock changes based on your altitude. Right. So, so I'm uh, well. According to my manual, I can only the fastest I can go is either 302 knots or 0.58 mock. Right, and that'll change based on your altitude. Right. So that's why they did the speed of sound test at 50,000 feet because it's easier to get to mock at those altitudes. Because the speed of sound is lower, the higher the altitude you go. So it also depends on barometric pressure as well, too. You want a perfect day. You want a 29.92 day to break the speed of sound. I'm pretty sure that if I if I would if I had the balls to do it and I pointed I got my 747 up to max speed and then pointed her straight down, she'd easily go supersonic on me. And then immediately fall apart. But <laughs> I was, would that be before or after the wings ripped off? Yeah, it's not really made for that. But all right. But back to what Moondog said. Your guy said that EVGA was not a good company. Well, he didn't funny. want to put it in there, so you know he must. I mean, he maybe he's had. He could be the guy, the one guy who's had a problem. He right. said, "Yeah, you know." I will say the 1050. Uh... Well, the thing is, though, is that. He's looking. He he's wanting a card that's you know a decent price, and ten sixties, ten seventies, ten eighties. They're right. all like right. You know, between four and eight hundred bucks right now because of that. 
Bitcoin. Ethereum mining. Yeah, you're a hard real to mind. find. Right. So I'm not saying a 1050 is a bad card, but the 1050 there's a there's a huge difference. Like your 10 like a 1050 is going to be about as fast as well, no, my, my 960 would actually be faster because of the overclock. But it's not a bad card. But if you can get, I, I'm telling you, Moondog, I'd hold out for 1070 because that's the, that, that's I, the when range I saw him that today, regular I people that, can afford. I told him, I'm tired of waiting. I understand his point of view. If he can get, you know, the next day or two, that EVG, EVGA and 80 is the price and everything. And he's like, okay. You get no, a 1080, like you're going to suddenly be the, the superstar of the monkey show. Well, well the, the only thing no, I'm worried about with that no, 1080... I'll, I'll be the second star. <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about with you getting a 1080 is that your CPU may bottleneck your 1080. Which means uh, that your 1080 uh, will run faster uh, than you... Uh, will uh, pr okay. provide oh, more it's, graphics. It's definitely going to... Yeah. Can, can yeah. It's... Yeah. Handle. It's definitely going to run. It's definitely going to run faster than you. It, it, a 1080 will run faster than any CPU. There's always yeah. going to be a little bottleneck. You know what I mean? But what CPU? You got an i7, didn't you? I've got an i7. Yeah. Yeah, that that'll be fine. You yeah. won't even notice it. You won't even notice it. I won't put a. I wouldn't put a 1080 in this. Not with a 6350. It it it'd slow it down too much. A 1070. I've done the research. Will be fine with this. I don't want to get a new processor. I like my processor. But I just want a 1070 so that you know not have to worry about it for another two years well that's like my 1070 i won't have to upgrade for like another five years probably that may be optimistic i hope that's true for your sake I... well you figured 980s still are running everything at tops you know yeah I... maxed out and they're already what almost four years old now i've been thinking about getting that now that the now that the the 10 series is is you know been fully sort of established now for a couple of years the 980s are starting to come down in price a little bit and for the same money that I was looking at a 1070, uh, but this, of course, this was an 11, uh, an 8 gig 1070, I could get an 11 gig 980, you know, one of the super fucking, hey, look how big my deck is ones for about the same money. And I'm like, mm, do I do that? Or do I oh, go to the 10 series? And oh, the 980 Ti. Well, the thing is, though, is that the ni 980 Ti, it was a power hog. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, listen, I have an AMD processor. I know all about power hogs. <laughs> Um, you know, where, my where the 10 series, it kind of sips the power, which right. is really nice. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a way lower TDP than than the 9 series does. My now this is a gigabyte G1 uh, gaming extreme 960 that I have, right? So it's uh, it's already you know juiced up from the factory. It's got a ton of headroom overclock wise, and I keep saying, well, I want to get a 1070. Then I I'll play some game with this, and I'll be like, well, why? Are you going to play anything that's going to require more graphics than this? Not really. You are. Not me, you know. Like, how many frame rates can? How many frames can you get? Like auto knots, you know what I mean? Like, geez, I'm getting uh, 700 frames a second. <laughs> I mean, if if nothing else, you could always get like another 960 and do it in 960s and SLI because I'm I pretty could. sure your motherboard will handle it. Yep, I don't. You don't need to do SLI anymore. Only for only for the 1080s do you need to SLI them. Anything under the anything under the 80 series, you don't need to SLI. You just plug them in; they work fine. So then I get uh, a true. You know, six gigs, because that's what this is—a six gig card. Well, well so. I thought I, I'm, I will, I'm pretty sure you still need the SLI bridge. Uh, because, I don't think so. Because <laughs> otherwise they'll, otherwise they'll act as two separate graphics cards, uh, and it won't, re, it, it won't, up. won't pick up both graphics cards. I'll have to look it up. I mean, it's not like you double up your your power anyway. You know, well, no, you still if you have it. six gigs before, you still have six gigs. Right. You know. Right. It just gives you all of this. You know what I mean? Right. You, you get all of it because it is using both cards. So right, I'll be back. In and it one doubles second. your cost. Oh, good. That's what you want to hear. The captain get out of the <laughs> chair while he's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But just, just at some point, you know, I love this computer. It's 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 pretty badass, and I like it. No, I'm not in a rush to upgrade it. Just for, you know, because I know the games are coming. The problem is, is as long as they're going to keep making these super powerful graphics cards, game developers are going to take advantage of it. So it's going to come to where you're not, you know, none of us are going to have enough graphics power. So, I mean, Project Cars 2, which I'm really looking forward to, it's got a ridiculous recommended 
spec. Even a minimum, they've just they just dialed the minimum spec down, but the recommended spec is a 1080. So, or what does that tell you? That tells you BP won't be playing it. <laughs> I, Although, I gotta say, the recommended spec for Project Cars normally was well, well, well beyond what the Abacus had, and the Abacus didn't have any trouble running it. So, the hell, probably in like the next 10, 15 years, there's gonna be like the GTX 3000, and it's gonna have a 1280. And it's gonna be like a like a five uh, five gigahertz clock speed, and but they're not that f- they're not that far off that now. No, uh, the 1080 Ti's are running at like two. Uh, I think they're like two point three, two point four gigahertz. Yeah, which is like half of what my of what my seventy six hundred uh, i seven runs. Sure, but look at how fast they process. Look at look at the cache speed on these things. You know what I mean? We're talking thousands of gigabytes a second. That's how fast graphics cards are. They are unbelievably fast. That's why people use graphics cards for regular, you know, computational pro, uh, computers. Because they're so fast. They're, they're ridiculously fast. My, my 960 base clock is 1980, well, 1960 something, right? It will turbo itself up to just about 2000. I can still clock this up, and I've tried it, up to about 2500. Holy shit. Well, my That's... <laughs> my 1070 out of the box uh, will boost itself to 1999. Right. And that's yeah. doing um that's doing uh and I I checked that on Heaven Benchmark, which is a free benchmark thing yeah. that you can do. Yeah. Well, your 1070 is 100% faster than my 960. The 10 series, the 1060 is 50% faster than the 960. And the 1080 is 500% faster than all of them. I mean, how much more percent faster can we be? You know what I mean? At what point do we start going backwards? Because <laughs> we're going so fast. Well, I'm going to put a graphics well, card well, in my computer, and it's suddenly going to be 1947. Well, my, ty- my, my 1070, they said, is the equivalent to the previous version's Titan. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry about speed until you hit plaid. After Ooh. that, then you got to worry. I'm saying... <laughs> I'm saying these fucking things are so fast. I, I'm seriously afraid. I'm going to plug in a graphics card one day and I'm going to suddenly go back in time. <laughs> I said, a bitch. What just happened? So, computer. And you go back so far, uh, go so far back in time, they won't have power and you can't get back. And I can't no. get back. You'll be back in time and you'll have to uh, save Kirk's girlfriend from Hitler's SS squad or something like that. Oh, that's an old one. Isn't that? Wow. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, for, that's, Original Star Trek. That's original. Yeah, that was original. But that, but that wasn't them going back in time. Oh, yes, yes, it was. That was, was that the... them going back in time, or was that them finding the planet no, where they got no, out themselves? No, I know the one that you're talking about. That was the portal of whatever. The, it was the, a portal that... The, something yeah. of yesterday, wasn't it called? The, 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 uh, the title some... of that episode was something yesterday. Yeah, and they, you're right, yeah. McCoy ran through it, right, because he was all he, fucked up. He was messed up and uh, yeah. delusional or something ran through, and they had to jump to the correct time, and they were off a day or two or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. was that the one where they, where it turns out that the set that they hopped onto, the set that they used for that was the same set that they that they filmed um, uh, Andy Griffith, the Andy Griffith, Griffith show on. The yeah, Main Street can... part. The Main, Main Street, Street part was yeah. was from was Mayberry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't recognize uh, that. Okay. The yeah. one where Spock has the the like the dark wool cap over his yeah uh, yes. on his head over his ears. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I can't remember what it was called. It was something yesterday was the title of the episode. That was a good one. I like that one. I like the ones where they where they either went back in time or they got like when they got stuck on, when they went to that planet and everybody went through the because the planet was dying and they were shipping people off to different times in the planet's history. And what's her face was in it? Uh, is that Jane Fonda? No, not Jane Fonda. What the uh, hell is her name? Uh, she was the one in the cave back in the Ice Age that Spock. She fell. Spock fell in love with her, and McCoy was all like pissed off. And oh, actually, I don't the... remember that one. I'll have to yeah. sure watch that one. Um, I like the one where they were. They got trapped with the sun. They ricocheted backwards and ended up back in the '60s. And the uh, oh yeah. Uh, the, the jet pilot came up to investigate, and yep. yeah, 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 yeah. My wife actually the... just did one of those Facebook name the Star Trek characters, and she goes, "Oh, this is no problem." She's and like on the third one, she goes, "Well, who's that?" Uh, <laughs> I'm like, "Um, that's it was uh, Core, which was the original Klingon that they met." Yep. 
Yep. And, and oh, the Klingons were so awful in the oh original. Oh, God, yeah. They were just black-faced. They were just jokes. Nothing. They were yeah. just... They were Cesar Romero's jokers, you know what I mean? But they weren't yeah. that cool. Yeah. The best, my... the best going back in time, the absolute best going back in time, Star Trek of all time, The Voyage Home. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic! That was so good. They were all so smooth and cool in that. Kirk was just getting. They let him be. They let William Shatner be a comedian in that one because that's what he is. Yeah. You know, Sulu was cool. Everybody was cool. Spock was even cool. You know, Gracie knows. Uh, yeah, that's what. How, how do you know she's pregnant? Nobody knows that. Gracie, Gracie knows. knows. <laughs> you know those colorful metaphors? Maybe you shouldn't use those. Use them. Yeah. How are you? Well, <laughs> And you know, and a lot of people disagree with me, but a lot of people agree, uh, also do agree with me. That movie there kind of set up the premise for the Borg in the Next Generation. It did. It did. People don't realize that that was J.J. Abrams was actually watching that movie at I don't know, fifteen years old or whatever, and said, "Hmm, if we've already been there, and this has already happened, then what if we did this?" And that's how it all started. Yes, and. Then, think the next best going back in time Star Trek was First Contact. Yeah. How cool yeah. was Zephyr yeah. Cochran? Zephyr Cochran, now, if you, you'd have to be a real Star Trek nerd to know some of this stuff. And, of course, that, a lot of it was written in the books, the Star Trek books. But everybody thought Zephyr Cochran, because he was a creator of Warp Drive, he was this cool, you know, this very, Funny. like, Brady, Einstein kind of guy, right? Turns out to be just this huge asshole drunk. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. Money. I love that I movie. want Money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> It was the great, that was the best movie, you know, because Data had his emotion chip in, and, yeah. you know, and, and, and that was, I love that movie. That was, but, that's my favorite Star Trek Next Generation movie. But uh, uh, Star Trek, uh, was it t uh, Timelines or uh, I can't remember the name of it, the one where uh, um, it had Kirk and Picard both in it, and they were caught in like that. Oh, Generations the, in the Next Generations, next. thank you. In yeah, the next, in the next. Anyway, and when the, and when the uh, Enterprise D gets destroyed by that. Klingon bird of prey, and yeah. um, the, the first word, uh, the last words out of Data's mouth were, before they crashed were, were "Oh shit!" Oh shit! Yep. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is, is that they had they had swore up and down, they had swore when they made the first Star Trek Next Generation movie, they were not because it's a running joke with Paramount and with you know with all the guys from Star Trek that they blow up the Enterprise in every movie, right? So they swore we are not going to blow up the Enterprise. We like this Enterprise. Blah blah blah. Of course, that was immediately we knew they were going to blow up the Enterprise so they could make a better one for the next movie. <laughs> That's like, there you go. There yeah. she is. Oh, there she is sliding into the ground, you know, becoming a big pile of slag. There's plenty more letters in the alphabet. There's plenty of more <laughs> letters in the alphabet, right. You the know what's cool is they had to do that because they had already brought in McCoy. They had already brought in Scotty. Um, so they had to bring in Kirk somehow. And Kirk didn't want to be the 90-year-old guy that just toured the Enterprise. He didn't want to be that. So, yeah. Yeah. and the first one was uh, McCoy in one of the first. Was it the second episode? Uh, they were showing uh, him. It, it was the no, mission to Starpoint, uh, the Far Point. Far Point Station was the very yeah, first, first. Yeah, it was, so it was, it was the was pilot. Person. Yeah, it was the McCoy was the very first episode. Yeah, and then well, no, actually, Scotty came after the movie, didn't he? Yes, yeah, Scotty yeah. was actually found on a on his wrecked ship. On a Dyson, on a Dyson sphere. sphere, right? Yeah. On a Dyson yeah. sphere, but that was after Generations. Actually, it was. Yeah. yeah. So they did. So they did McCoy, McCoy, and then they did Kirk with the movie, and then they did Scotty, Scotty. and they didn't yeah. do anybody else after that. No, Spock. Yeah, but Spock. No, but not. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. Sorry. Well, yeah, they, right. they didn't. Spock. Yeah. Well, yeah, they didn't have Sulu, but they had Su uh, what was supposed to be, uh, uh, Sulu's, Sulu's daughter. Daughter. Right. daughter. Sulu's daughter. Right. Sulu's daughter. In Generations. Did he die? Did he? Didn't they say he died? Um, I don't know I don't... if they ever said what happened to him in the movie because I seem to remember that. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to watch it again. I think it's they're all on Amazon Prime, <laughs> but I, I don't remember. I, I thought they said he died or he had a disease or something. He caught. I thought he caught a disease and he was incapacitated or something. I don't know. I don't and... recall. I, I mean, the last thing you saw was his ship. Uh, wishing Kirk's ship, right, six, right, you know, fair sea sailing and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, right. in the um, because he was captain of the Excalibur, yeah. the Excelsior, 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 Excelsior. the, the, yeah. the transwarp one, yeah. Okay, remember, remember that one when Scotty took the took the the, the, the guts out of it, so the transwarp drive didn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
Doesn't I, matter uh, how you. complicated they make them. What? I don't remember the rest of the line, but yeah. yeah. So. E- it, it, the easier it is to uh, make a malfunction or take them apart, something yeah, like that. Something Scotty clever, yeah. he said. Yeah. That was it. Those are, you know, the new Star Treks. Uh, I get it. They're trying to market Star Trek to a younger so, audience and, you know, with a whole different timeline and everything, but. So, so funny thing, James Doohan was an actual real life army badass during World War II. What was he? Yeah. He was shot. He was shot six times wow. uh, in Normandy. Last time he lost part of his thumb, and he took a bullet to the cigarette uh, to a cigarette case that he had in his shirt pocket. Oh. Or that one would have ended him. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, he was a real life. He he was a real life Canadian, and he was also Canadian. He wasn't even Scottish. Right. He's well. He is Scottish, but he's he's from Canada. Yeah. I do know that he was in Bonanza a whole bunch of times, actually. I know that. Yeah. He did a lot of westerns, yeah. but everybody did westerns back then, you know? Uh, yeah, McCoy was a big-time western star. Uh, yeah, yeah. after Forrest Kelly was in, was in a lot of westerns. Singer too, They all did. Wasn't he? Yes, he did sing. He had an album. It's called. I think yeah. it was actually called... It was probably one of those 60s names, like did Forrest Kelly sings your classics or your favorites or whatever. Yeah. But... He was great in Final Frontier when he the got... real drop. When, what? This is what's up. We're, we're talking about Star Trek. Oh. Uh, well... Yeah, to the TV show. Well, one of the, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is... So, do you remember in Star Trek The Next Generation when uh, the battle at Wolf 359 where the fleet in, intercepts the Borg Cube and is destroyed? Yes. Right. One of the ships that was destroyed was called the DeForest Kelly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? That's they they snuck they snuck a lot of that in. If you look anytime there was a fleet buildup, and if you look really closely, you can see like especially if they're looking at a tactical view of of the ships and they show the names and the little tags above them. There's ones called there's a Gene Rodmary out there, the USS Rodmary. Yeah. There's um there's a there's a uh, 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 what was the other one? Oh, the 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 US the the USS Freedom. Yeah, which is named for Uhura because that's what her name means. Uh, there's it, that's a that's a thing they've always done, which is really cool. There's also one out there called the the Walter W Disney, oh, or the Walter something Disney, which is uh, which is in uh, Star Trek Enterprise somewhere. I, I think she's a supply ship, if I remember correctly. They showed it real quick one time, but like it like it they were coming into space dock and it was going by. So and what's his face, the engineer trap or tip or whatever the name was was looking at it and he kind of did the eyebrow thing i hated that show i couldn't stand scott whose idea was that (laughs) someone thought it was a good idea you're you can't be jonathan archer you know why you can't be jonathan archer because you're not fucking english that's why (laughs) jonathan archer was english wow welcome to the holy shit did this just get nerdy stream (laughs) well uh the real drop was saying that uh the star trek movies can't stand up to the tv shows Oh, see. Uh, I think, uh, yes and no. It's a debate, you know. That's... Depends on depends on the movie. If you're talking about the original series movies, they were better than the original series TV show. Oh, listen. If you like, listen. I'm a I'm uh, the biggest Star Trek fan in the world. Star Trek: The Motion Picture was the most boring fucking movie ever. I don't know. Made. I, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I really this. liked it. I, no, I did this. I counted from when they encountered v- Viger. Till it's the time twelve they got and a half inside. minutes. Yeah. No, do you know, know how many times Scotty w- or McCoy went on and off the bridge? <laughs> Thirteen times he went through that door. Had, right, because he kept having to go off the set to have a cigarette. Yeah. Because it kept... took so long to film. <laughs> he was on and off and on and off. You just saw him walking. Because what else were they supposed to? Do? Oh, we're you're watching the ship. It's big and huge. Okay. You know what's fucked up about that is if you got the you got you know when that came out it was on VCR tape right. So you'd get it on VCR tape, and then you'd go buy the special extended version, which was 12 and a half more minutes of them flying through V'ger. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> but, but in all fairness, though, if that movie had not been made, <coughs> Star Trek, Star Trek as we know it probably well, would have been this. That would have been, oh, been yeah. the end of it. Yeah. That movie saved the franchise. That would have been the end of it. Well, here's the thing. Paramount has always had a contract with, with, with the creators of Star Trek, with Roddenberry and the, and the guys for seven years. Every Star Trek show is supposed to last seven years. Now, NBC boned 
boned him on the original one and they didn't get seven years. They did get seven years from the next generation. They would have gotten seven years. They got seven years from Voyager. How they managed to stretch that stupid shit out for seven years, I don't know, but they did. Uh, yeah, they got yeah. seven years out of Deep Space Nine, which was another horrible show, except for the last seven episodes in the Dominion War part. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they wouldn't get to get seven years out of Enterprise because everybody was like, please make this go away, it hurts. So <laughs> the last good Star Trek, it, it, and Star Trek Voyager was good after about the first couple of seasons. It got better when the Doctor started to, they really started to develop the characters in, in Seven of Nine. Got the I would say they also brought Jerry Ryan on and got rid of the crazy one that was yeah. on there. Kess was, Kess was interesting. That What's his face? The, the uh, dude, Neelix. Neelix, yeah. He was yeah. fairly interesting. I was always a fan of the Doctor. I thought the Doctor was great. You know, doctor, I thought the whole, after a while, well, the he doctor, carried the series. He really did. Me. He really yeah. did carry the series towards the end, yeah. Well, the Doctor, I, I liked seeing how he progressed from being just a hologram, know, to, a be hologram a person. to be in a person. I thought it was cool when they built all the holographic repeaters in the hallway so he could get out of the, out of, yeah. the sick bay and walk around the ship. And how they, was it the Prometheus? They ended up uh, going back in time with the Prometheus. It was the Prometheus, yeah. And yeah. ended up getting the, um, getting the hollow emitter, the mobile hollow emitter for him. Yeah. So he could go on the ship, so he could go on away missions yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, the, uh, and, and then, you know, the if you actually the, start and watch it, that was all done before uh, a couple of the, the Generations movie, and then he ended up being on the emergency hologram on uh, he was the, the emergency Enterprise. Hologram. Yep, he yeah. was the emergency hologram, yep. So The saddest episode but, of, of that show was when Kess died, and we knew she was going to die. She was only going to live nine years. That well, was she, her, she didn't right. exactly die. She just kind of well, she evolved. Went away. Right, but... Neelix is, you know, <laughs> and you get so used to her, you know, you get so used to a character, you, you sort of, you know, you take ownership of them, and then all of a sudden they're not there anymore, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, where's Kes going? I don't know. The, the, the one that I, the one that, you know, I kind of felt, the one character I kind of felt bad about leaving was when Neelix stayed on that asteroid when he yeah. found the rest of his people. Yeah. When he found the rest of the furry weirdos, yeah. Well, Neelix was all right, though. Neelix was it, Neelix. They needed Neelix on the show because that show could have been very. Because Janeway, whatever her real name is, she was yeah, not yeah. fun. She was not funny. She was not clever. She wasn't, you know, not that Patrick Stewart was particularly fun, but he was a great actor. So, and Catherine Janeway was stiff as fuck in the beginning. Oh. She was miserable. I couldn't oh, stand yeah. to watch her. Well, Patrick Stewart brought a little bit of class to where people were used to the cowboy. Yeah. You know, well, the cowboy persona of Kirk. Star Trek was a 60s, was a science fiction western. They didn't know how else right. to make it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then, then you get Sir Patrick Stewart, who's a Shakespearean actor, you know? He was, he, I hated it. The, the encounter at Farpoint, I was like, I will never watch this show again. The encounter at Farpoint was probably Awful. the worst episode of <laughs> Star Trek Next Generation. It but was I do like how it Awful. introduced Q and how Q. Now, Q is what made me say, hmm. Because I was about halfway through that episode, and I'm like, this is just awful. The uniforms are horrible. Who's this Greek chick? What is this guy? What's, what's with the kid? What if Patrick Stewart is horrible? What's going on? What have they done to my show? And then Q comes along, and I'm like, oh, now, wait a minute. This guy, I like whatever his name is, John Del Delancey or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I like this guy, and he's cool, and let's watch him. And they made him way cooler as he got as the show progressed. You know and they mean? could not have picked a better actor for Oh, Q. he was perfect. I he cannot was... picture anybody else ever being Q. But you know who played a good... Corbin Birdson played a good Q, too, though. Yeah. Remember when he... Yeah, when he did. Q, when Q lost all his powers and the other Q had to come and get him? He, he played a good Q because he was just as much of a smartass as the original Q was. So I thought that was cool. Who was the original Q, everybody? Does anybody know who the original Q was? Come yes. on, think back to the original series. That episode where Kirk ends up on the planet right. and, and what's his face wants to keep him as a pet. Oh, you never let um, me have anything. Very, very... Is it? it was oh, it, uh, yeah, was yeah. it Ron Howard's little brother? No, 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 no. It was the one the, that the creepy little kid. No, it was the one that was uh, this the kid, the infinite kid. Uh, yeah, I know the episode, but I can't yeah. think of the. He was the original Q. He was a yeah. Q. They never yeah. said it, but he was a Q. That's what yeah. he. But, but wasn't he? You never wasn't he played by anything. Ron Howard's uh, little brother? No, he's played by some no. old man. But some yeah. He was a really. famous actor, the guy who played him, and I can't think of his name, but he was the original Q. They never said it, but as soon as 
And of course, we wouldn't have known back then watching. But when, as soon as I they introduced Q, I'm like, wait a minute, that other that, guy that was, from, the, was, from the original yeah. episode, he was a Q too. Yeah. Oh, you never let me have anything oh, fun. fun. Yeah, because he had infinite power yeah. over everything. And yep, put your toys uh, away, away and come home, home now. now. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. No. No. My two favorite episodes of the original series, so one was Tholian Web. Yeah, that was a good one. And the other one was, um, and I've, I mentioned it before, where they end up on that planet where they recreated the German society. Yes. And I remember because it caused a big uproar. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Hearing about it causing a big uproar because um, Spock said that he kind of admired that. And everybody was freaking out. Well, and he had to explain that the reason why is because, you know, Germany was this basically impotent, impotent country that became the biggest global threat, you know, in the uh, in the world at that time. Well, and also, that, let's, let's remember that Leonard Nimoy was Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> so. For him to say that was like, well, wait a minute. My favorite, my favorite, I don't know that I have a favorite. I, I know I have a favorite Next Generation episode. And that's the one where Picard gets kidnapped by the The Kardashians. best of both worlds. Uh, oh, mine's the best of both worlds with the Borg. Is, which one is that? Which Borg? Is that the one where they... It's the two-parter you? where he gets kidnapped by the Borg and gets turned into Lucidus. Oh, Lucidus. oh, right. The cliffhanger, the fourth yeah. season cliffhanger or whatever. Yeah, that's a good one, too. But, man, you can't... I'm saying, that one where he gets kidnapped by the Cardassians, there are five Four. fights! Yeah. He, was, he acted the shit out of that. He was so good. At, that's when I realized how good an actor Patrick Stewart was. He was... And when he went... When they went with Spock, with... Uh, uh, with what was it called? Reconciliation or whatever. Um, that was oh, a two-parter too. When they went yeah. to Romulus, yeah, Romulus, and they actually came across uh, uh, Denise, Cros uh, Denise Crosby. Denise Crosby, where she yeah. was playing yeah. Romulus As when she was playing Romulan. her, playing her own daughter. Yeah, which was yeah. Just, that was a mind fuck, right? You're like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, but because, it, but and the only reason why is back in time. <laughs> when did that happen? And then they showed it, you know, however many episodes later. It's like, oh, that's how that happened. Oh, yeah. that was cool. That was fantastic. Well, my favorite line from that from that story, though, was um, one of the Klingons was taking them into Romulan space, and they were talking to Data, and Data said, oh. and, she, and he goes, you better be careful, or some little Romulan thing will lick that paint right off your some, skin. And I'm some, like, <laughs> some Romulan beauty will lick the paint right off your ears. <laughs> yep. Oh. Klingons got so much better in the next generation. It became actual human beings. Worf was always way too much of it. Like the Worf needed to pull that stick out of his ass occasionally. But his brother, yeah. his brother was fantastic. Yeah. Just drunk and loud and just Klingon. You know, he smelled like a Klingon. You know what I mean? He played Kern was the best. He made the best faces. But even better than him was the guy who played the oh fuck is his name when the whole Civil War was going on. Um. The um. Not the it bad started, Klingon, not the, not the Duras, with, the other uh, one. Well, not Duras, Shit. not the heavy set, uh, great no, guy. No, Duras uh, was a prick. We didn't. Nobody yeah. liked Duras. But the you're other talking guy. about the guy with the bug eyes. Yes, he was. He made the best faces. Oh, what the hell was his name? He ended up becoming the the leader of the Klingon Council. What the fuck was his name? Yeah. I can't. Uh, I can't remember his name. Duras, and uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, mine too. Fuck. Duras was a prick, and his son was a prick. And it, but but his but his sisters, they were all right. They were cool. Yeah. You know, like when they kidnap Worf, and Worf's just like, "Get away from me." How about Worf's wife or Worf's girlfriend, Alexander's mother? Ooh, oh, she was yeah, a, she, dude, yeah. Um, for Klingon, yeah, she, she, I, 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 <laughs> she was a lousy actor. Of course, she had a rough role because she was trying to play half Klingon, half human, which nobody had ever done before. So that she's just kind of winging it, but. And Alexander, I mean, God, could you please put that kid in the incinerator or in the blender? <laughs> that fucking so, kid. He was just annoying from the first episode. Alexander, you want to see this pet? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do nothing else. I mean, he wasn't even a Klingon. Like, I get no. it. He was half human and half Klingon, too. I understand that. But damn. Well, he wasn't even half was... human. He was only like a third human. Well, no, his mother was half human. So, And Worf is fully Klingon. So that would make him what? Three quarters Klingon, I guess. Quarter, quarter, Klingon, no, yeah. three quarter, three quarter, Klingon. quarter Klingon. Yeah. But still, remember the episode where he came back in time as himself to stop himself from being such a little pussy? <laughs> and Worf almost killed him? 
by accident. It was like, when you have to write that story because you know that the character you've created is just miserable, then maybe you should have just sent this, let this kid stay with the Rashenkos. Why did you bring him back to the Enterprise? Wesley, when they brought him back after he had that whole thing at the Academy where he got in that accident and did things he wasn't supposed to do and lied about it and everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Wesley, go away now. Nobody's interested well, in you. What I think is funny, though, is that the one that one of the ones that caught that was in on the accident and everything was the same one that in Enterprise played Tom Paris. Tom Paris, yeah, 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 yeah. I have no, a friend and, of mine uh, that... uh, um, the Voyage yeah. Home, Deep Space. What the fuck was that show called? In, no, Voyager. Enterprise or Voyager. 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 Um, I had a friend of mine that kept complaining about the fact that, um. They were using actors as for different characters. Like right. we had Tom Paris. Well, they, he can't do that because he's that. You know Why how not? many times? Uh, oh, freaking nurse, fr nurse. Uh, from oh, nurse Chapel. Chapel. Dude, Chapel was everything. She was everything. everything. She was. She was number. She was the original number one. You she know, was she the was original number one. Yep. She was yep. uh, Nurse Chapel. She was the voice of all the computers. She was everything. Why? Because yeah, no, she, she was Gene Roddenberry's favorite girl. Yeah. And she also played Deanna's mother. Yeah. Rachel Barrett, the best, the best character ever in any Star Trek ever was. Must want to try. Just. Yeah. I remember fantastic. the wedding. Well, with the wedding that she had. Well, of wedding. course, all the Jorans for their wedding are naked. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I, I remember. I Beta's, remember when Beta's I yeah, Beta's Beta's I remember when I was first introduced to uh, to her in, in Star Trek Next Generation because I didn't know that that was the same person because she had aged quite a bit from sure yeah. then to there. But I remember sitting there and I'm like, you know, she's old enough to be my grandmother, but she still looks pretty damn good sitting in that mud. <laughs> <laughs> she, she'd come on the she'd come on the ship with them dresses and Mister Hom and just be like, damn, there's yeah. my girl. That's what I'd always say. There's my girl. She's way better looking than Deanna to try. It's like, where did you come from? I love when she used to talk to her in her head and call her a little one and stuff. That's how I yeah. come to call my call my English daughter a little one because well, of that. Oh. Well, do you remember when um, the Ferengi kidnapped her? Yeah, yeah, and she, <laughs> and they just kept begging her to rub rub their ears and <laughs> and Patrick Stewart. Remember Patrick Stewart said to said to said to uh, Bill Franks, he's like, do we have to try to get her back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and she never really had any interest in him. She just liked to screw with him. She liked to screw with him, right? That, and then I was so glad when they made her a person, finally, too, when they made her stop being quite so much of a comic strip. When David Ogden Stiers was on and he was the guy, yeah. he was getting to a certain age and everybody on his planet died at that age so they didn't get sick or whatever. And she'd right. fall in love with him. And, and if they didn't die, they had, to, they had to commit suicide? Yeah, they had to go to this place and be killed, basically. And she lost it. Like she just she that that was that's one of my all time favorite Star Trek episodes. Anytime the characters got human was was my favorite. Like Picard when he was Locutus, Picard when he went home, you know, and he met up with his brother, brother. and they had that big yeah. fight, you know, yeah. in the mud and he was crying and all that. And and you know, so, or when he was kidnapped by the Kardashians, that was the Kardashians. <laughs> yeah. That's the second time. <laughs> I didn't realize it the first time, yeah. Um the, uh, Ky but, Kylie, Kylie Jenner kidnapped Patrick Stewart. Oh my God! Oh. But the one thing I've always tried to figure out: so Jean Luc Picard, he lived in France. He had a French name, right? Yeah, he had, but it, it was Patrick okay. Stewart. So he had an English accent. Okay, so you're overthinking that. It's the same way Sean Connery can be a Russian sub captain and have a Scottish <laughs> accent. Okay, or Sean Connery can be anything and have a Scottish accent. True. Sure. Oh, so, you got to realize that it's, it's it, it, at the time of. Especially if, if you need the nerdy explanation, the time of Star Trek, it was all one world. So it was a very good chance that while he lived in France, France and England, you know, they're only a couple miles apart, right? So, it, they, you know what I mean? He's probably got, he probably went to school in England and they went to the academy and that's, you know, whatever. It's the same reason, like I said, that, that you know, that Sean Connery can play a Russian sub captain, sound nothing like a Russian captain, but pull it off. Be careful to what you shoot at. Some things in here don't react well to bullets. You know, oh, I just watched that the other day. One of my favorite movies. It's one of my favorite movies until Alan Baldwin shows up, and then I don't like it anymore. Or Alec Baldwin. A Baldwin. The worst, the worst Jack Ryan of all time. Harrison Ford was the best Jack Ryan. But I think, but, but I think my favorite 
Spock slash Leonard Nimoy saying always uh, was, you know, when he stopped the um, warp core from breaching. Oh, yeah. And he, and he said the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Right. And if you didn't cry right then, yeah. you're lying. You, ha- you have no soul. You know you were crying. I know I was crying. Like, Spock can't die? What the fuck? And then when Spock die? And then when, he, when they realize, and then when somehow he, uh, through the Genesis project on that planet he came, or that moon he came back to life, but he was just a child. Do you know that that was written before? That whole, the next bit was written before they ever wrote that movie. So they knew exactly what they were doing. If you watch the end of that movie and you watch, who, who launched them? Um, Chekhov launched them, right? Launched the tube. You can see it in Chekhov's face. He altered the trajectory of that on purpose so that it would soft land on a planet knowing that the, or hoping that the Genesis effect would bring him back to life. That was all part of it. They knew that was going to come. So when they found him, it was like, well, that's not much of a surprise now, is it? I was thrilled. I was like, yes. You know? Like, what about, and, what, what about Uhura and doing her dance? Our dance on, in, in Final Frontier, up in the sand. She yeah. Listened. Nich- Nich- uh, whatever her name is, Nich- Nichelle Nichols. Nichelle. She was hot as fuck. I don't care if she's 60 <laughs> years old. She was all right up there dancing with just the fans. Go go get some, girl. You know, she was awesome. Um, We're flying the, into HECA, right? That's what you've I'm, that's what I'm you've already on about. the ground. Okay. I'm on the ground park. Ninja hey, shut take, off. Take Dugan, what's up? I'm just waiting uh, for Moondock to land and then I'm going. Hurry up. Okay. I'm sorry. Working on it. <laughs> What's the... See, I, I had a thought. Now I forgot what it was. Uh, shit, I can't remember that. Whatever. It'll come to me at some random time. Yeah, there's so many great Star Trek movies. Uh, Star Trek moments, you know? It, it, even in movies that weren't great, there were still good moments. Like Sarek, when he came to, to Jim Kirk and said, why'd you leave my son behind, you know? And Sarek was great. I, I always loved... Uh, Mark, what's the guy, Mark Leonard was his name, I think, yeah. right? He was fantastic. Or, w- or when he knew that he had that degenerative, degenerative oh, disease, so he geez, he I melded with, uh, with with Picard. Picard, yeah. But he was so good in that to act that out, to act that whole like losing after so many years of being, you know, Sarek and being the ultimate sort of. I mean, it, it was basically logic and, it was basically the Vulcan version of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Yeah, it was it, right, and, and just think after so many years of repressing all your emotions. You know, and then having them all come out at once. And how about at the end when when Patrick Stewart was sitting in the chair with Doctor whatever her name was, and he's you know doing the thing and he's shaking and he's crying. It makes you realize what a great actor Patrick Stewart was too. Anytime those characters got human, I got real interested. My favorite, um, what's the redheaded doctor's name? I can't think of her name. Anyway, uh, she was Crusher. Hot. She was hot too. Yeah, but when she went to the back to the colony to the scottish colony and met the ghost that had been falling in love with members of her family for 600 yeah. years like that was cool too you know anytime those characters got human like data when data got his head cut off and then when he got his emotion chip when he met lore for the first time when lore fucked him for the first time when lore fucked him for the second time you know lore was fun so yeah you know i'm, I'm g- glad they finally got rid of him but he was cool for a while <laughs> Or what about the irony of Jordy LaForge, a blind man, trying to teach a android how to paint? How to paint, right. <laughs> right. What was, what was Laura's, what was uh, Data's daughter's name? Um, oh. Fuck. That was a sad one, too. Le- when she... Not Lilu. Uh, Le- Lilu was the thing from the fifth element. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Le- it was a... Uh... Leah? No, it she was... picked her own name. What the hell did she pick? I can't. Oh, shit. It was someone in L, wasn't it? Or are That's we just what... transposing no. that from lore? No, it was something with an L. Anybody in chat know? Hey, want to help us out here? Uh, uh, but anyway. Your, when... pull, pull out your book that you have with all the notes in it. And... Wow, when you're, when you're this nerdy, it <laughs> hurt. Um, what's the... Oh, shit. Lol. Lol. L-A-L. That was it. Lol. Yep. But it was sad. It was so sad. Did, some, did someone end, just Google like, that? I no, did. You did? Oh, good for you. Because I, I, I knew it was L something. I just couldn't remember what it was. It was so sad at the end when she was breaking down and she was dying. And he's, you know, she's like, father. You know, I'm just like, oh, not another Star Trek. How many Star Trek episodes are going to make me cry? 
<laughs> you know, like, here's another one. Add that one to the list. That was fantastic. Okay. That was or, Star Trek. Or Star what? Trek. A, Go ahead. What about the one where the boy's mother was killed on the planet by uh, by an ancient booby trap, and Worf uh, Worf was leading the away mission. Oh, and he became all obsessed with. Wasn't that Data? Oh, no. they did that twice, right? They did. That no, they did, they did that once twice. With Data and once with Worf. Yeah, but Worf uh, Worf was trying to figure out how to how to make amends for it. Yeah. And the alien, there was like an alien or something that actually came in and convinced it took the shape of the boy's mother. Right. And 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 he was convinced his mother had come back, and Worf had to come and get you know come get yeah. the kid and tell the alien to go away and all that. But they did that same thing again with Data. Yeah, they did it with Data, where the boy was emulating Data. Yeah, that little kid became obsessed with Data, and then they did it again with, uh, with, uh, Riker when with that kid on the planet. Yeah, yeah. Remember? Well, they also did it. They also did it with Data when a very young, oh, um, yeah. very young Nikki Cox Nikki played Cox. the alien of the uh, of the planet that was destroying itself. Pen pals. Yep. 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 That was an early episode, but yep. Yeah. Yep. They had a lot of that. They had, a, they had a lot of that sort of, you know, they wanted it because they, they wanted to get kids. They want to get more kids involved in the show. So Alexander and Wesley and Wesley was at least interesting. Alexander yeah. was in the ass. It, it, it went to well, the extreme when they had it. Uh, the uh, was it Picard and uh, the one uh, uh, where they backed them in age. They made them kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it was Picard. Uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, Dinan and, and Ro. Ro. Yeah. That was another one that could have fucked off. I hated her. What, what about the episode Evolution where they get back to the ship and everybody has evolved has uh, devolved. devolved devolved into you know whatever and I think and Worf turned into that like spider thing or whatever. And and Diana was and Diana was a um a a was some type of frog. Yeah, she was a lizard. <laughs> well, whatever, yeah. Yeah. But... but yeah, that was a that was an interesting one. Or that one where um where they, they they found that probe and it well there's two they found a probe one the best one was when he went back he he became that all the guy bad memories of the guy of that, that guy with, with the flute and, yeah with the yeah. flute and he, that was that great. flute is still in existence it never plays but it's been auctioned off for decent money yeah. if I remember right yeah it's, it's everyone wants to have that, that flute why that's a fantastic episode that's such a good episode he was so or, good at that or what about the episode because we all know that. Picard was not a fan of kids. No. Oh, the one we got trapped in the elevator? When he got trapped the in the turbo kids. lift with the three kids, it was during Captain's Appreciation Day or something like that? Yeah, he was supposed to be giving the kids a tour of the ship. And, uh, well, he, they, that's why they did that, because they said, okay, we gotta make this guy a little bit, you know, not quite so much of a standoffish prick. So, not that I ever thought he was. He's the captain of the ship. He doesn't have to mess with kids. That's what he's at number one for. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, that's, that was well, Will Riker's hell, sole what... job. It's Counselor Troy's job, really, on there. I mean, what else is she supposed to do up on that bridge? I well, understand that she was good for the premise of the looks and helping the story along. Sit there and look but, mildly well, hot. Well, that things. was the yeah. reason why they no longer, why she was no longer just a counselor. In no, later episodes, she became yeah. a commander. She became yeah. a commander, right? They gave yeah. her they they made her go to they made her go to bridge training and and officer training and all that because she held the rank of, of commander, just like a doctor would hold the rank of commander. But right. she wasn't actually on the command crew. But later, they you know she started wearing a uniform. They they made her grow up a little bit, which was good. I I was all for that too. Like I said, anytime they, they enhance the characters, they took the dresses off of her, put her in the skin tight uniform, which is okay. I can look at that. But... <laughs> But do you remember the episode where she had to take command of the of the battle bridge when yeah. the yeah. yeah? Do you remember the episode where where Beverly Crusher took command of the Enterprise because the warp bubble was shrinking around the ship and she didn't realize uh -huh. that it was her? That everybody she thought yeah. everybody was disappearing, but what was happening was the warp bubble was shrinking around the ship, so the space was getting smaller around her. Well, or or what about the one where they show where they come back and the uh, and there's a Romulan warbird and the Enterprise frozen in time. Oh yeah, when it's getting shot, and, that, and it turns out the aliens had like built like a nest or something in the artificial black hole that powered the Romulan warbird. Yeah, yeah. The one that I sort of liked the most was the one where they had to get the uh, other ship, the the Phoenix, 
that had the experimental cloaking device. Yeah, Riker's old ship. Riker's old ship. And oh, Commander. you know what? The pe- uh, and, uh, no, uh, the, the was that the Pegasus? Of it. The, the no, Pegasus. Pegasus. Yeah. Yeah. When they went, and it was it was warped halfway into the into the it asteroid. The asteroid. Yeah. And the Ramans were looking for it, and then Picard did the. Well, we found it. Here it is. We've got it, and popped right in front of them with it. Yeah. Who played? Who played? Who played? The guy that played Riker's old captain was a prick. He was. Oh, yeah. And remember the guy. Remember when um when Picard. When they went on that mission and Ronnie Cox became the captain of the Enterprise, I hate Ronnie Cox. He's such a shitty actor. Well, well that and I'm was like, that, why that, are you? <laughs> that was the same ep- episode where Picard gets kidnapped by the Cardassians. Yes, because they went on the mission and he got yeah. caught. But it was like I hated I oh, Ronnie Cox is and of course he, I mean they must have wrote him that way on purpose. Obviously, he kept fighting with Riker and ended up relieving him. And and then the other one when when who became the captain when he got kidnapped by the Borg. Was uh, that Riker, Ryan Cox too? Riker, no, Riker became captain, and no, there was somebody else in the. Oh no, it was and Commander Shelby officer. took over. Yeah, Shelby, she's yeah. a pain in the ass too. Yeah. How do you guys even remember all that stuff? <laughs> uh, it seen... hurts, don't it? It hurts to be in this room right now. Zig's just sitting over there, going, Shut "I never did cocaine up. before, but yeah, I'm gonna start." Oh. Because we've probably wow. all have seen every episode of Star Trek Listen, more times than we can count. No matter what else I am, Zig, I am at heart a massive nerd. I, I, nope. <laughs> and I will we, own that. Be glad we haven't started talking about Lord of the Rings and all the esoteric little bits about that I know. You know, there's, trust okay. me. Oh, good. We can go there uh, too. We can, my, oh, ner- I, my nerdiness knows no end. <laughs> I, I just can't remember that much stuff. You know what it is? It's because whenever a show touches you that way, right? It touched me. Yeah. Should I call the police? Um, no. It, it, <laughs> whenever a show, whenever a show gets into your head like that, I think that's when you remember it. You know what I mean? Let's. Next yeah. generation has been on for twenty something years. We all still remember every bit of it because yeah. well, it was important to us. You know what I mean? It was a it was a big deal to us. So it, well, you know what. <laughs> My brain doesn't work that way because I have never been able to remember like movie quotes and oh, just stuff like that. Details about stuff like that. I, I speak in movie quotes. Everything I say is a movie quote. It's like <laughs> so I guess I remember a different kind of useless information. I think. I guess. Well, hey, everybody has their own, you know, their own <laughs> stuff piled up in their brain. So. Right. Well, see, for me, you know, it, it was, you know, not to go into details, but I had a really bad childhood. So watching that made me think, you know, things will get better in the future. So that's what I always watched. And that's why I remember it all. And even to this day, I still watch them just because, well, Jesus fun. Doc. During all this, I almost missed your damn landing. You're coming <laughs> at 2,500 feet already. Yeah. Um, you may want to get lined up on that side less, though. Yeah, I was down. all the, the wrong Put spot. your gear I'm, down. I got to slow up still yet. Don't want to separate? Do you, do you need to separate the ship? Christ, I can't even find to. your plane. Um, He's about 30 degrees right of the ILS well, at the moment. Well, I'm looking for it in air traffic. All right, yeah, guys, nice. I got to shut it down. I got to get up here for too long. All right, Zig. Good right, talking Zig. to you. Or we'll probably, you know, good talking at you since you didn't say much. <laughs> not that you should. Like, he was just like, oh, shut up. Oh, I can't believe you won't shut up. <laughs> Because that became a massive nerd orgy at the end there. I hope we didn't get any on you. <laughs> uh, I wiped it off. It was all right. Yeah. It's okay. it's just that, that, you that's all right. We'll, we'll pass on to uh, BP here the uh, nice little video that your wife made for us. Oh, the, yeah. She's like, like, you guys are fucking weird. I knew you were weird before. <laughs> Christ. All right. No, I'll see you guys on. Uh, I'll be on uh, probably not till Saturday. but. All right. All right, all right so see you Saturday. Easy. Have a see good week. At some point, I'll land. I just want to drag this out because it's been, if nothing else, if it's been an interesting conversation. Yeah. We haven't I hope I'm the Lord of the Rings yet, so we got plenty to deal with that. And we and well, we let me to... probably won't get to that tonight. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to use it all up because then I won't have <laughs> anything to talk about myself next. I hope I'm watching you, Moondog. I'm not sure if uh, this I, is the right plane. The fuck did I talk about during my stream? Oh, we ended up talking about Farm Sim, of course, because I was playing ETS too. So, okay. of course, we talked about Farm Sim the entire time. Are you kind of doing like a 
slow turn. Why is it, why is it turn. looping all the way back around? Come on. Oh, look, because there's a pyramid. It's a 747-400 yeah. in front of you. Um, uh, it's trying to get lined up on the ILS one. Yeah, I was trying to get it lined up correctly, and it's just... Hold on, let me zoom so, the screen in so I can see what's going on. Uh, I'm just I just tried to scroll in. <laughs> See, it feels terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you see? Um, you should be circling over the pyramids if yeah, the, it's just you're the plane I'm watching. No, it's trying to track on the waypoint that's not there. I, I've got it now. I think. I don't understand how your GPS works. What is? What one way are you trying to land on? Nine right. Uh, is it nine, nine, five, nine, nine? five left. Oh, five left. Oh, because you're pointing yeah. the wrong way. So I was yeah. extrapolating compass position. But I, oh, all right. I, yeah. Can you not go direct to the last waypoint? I was the just ILS doing start? that. I was trying to do that, and it's looping around, and it's got it. Well, just fly it yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to here in a second. Or ask them for vectors. Yeah. Request airport direction. I'll give you a heading to fly to. Looks like you want to fly about. I can't quite make it out. Is that uh, four or five, somewhere around there? All right. So east, obviously. That's a lot. Just follow the purple line. Yep. Yeah, flaps, flaps, How far out? flaps coming down. Yeah, any land. Yeah, I have you Yeah, I do. Yeah, you pitched up too much here. Flaps come up. Obviously. Yeah. Somewhere right down here is this is where I fly the plane, and I'm trying to find real quickly an airport in the middle of my left. Wait a minute, do this the right way. Finish the loop. Right. this and I'm going to be sideways here hope none of you get sick now Back this and line up <clears throat> it's a fairly aggressive turn. Yeah, I know. It's not though. It really is a, looks it, but it's really. It's probably right at the end of the forty. Forty degrees that you can yeah. roll is over. Yeah. Well, it'll tell you on your HSI anyway. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. Ed, sorry. Uh, I'm just getting ready. Wait for Moondog to, to find you. So. Anybody watching my stream, sorry that there wasn't much talking about flying, but that's how all of our streams go. It's what we do. As a matter of fact, I remember a Farm Sim episode live stream where we got philosophical. Us? And started talking about weird stuff. Us? Philosophical? Yeah. Yeah, we actually got philosophical. It didn't last long, but we did. Why am I climbing so much to get down? Thank you. How did I do that? I rolled all the way past the airport again. Fog, low level clouds. I want to be hitting five. Come on, I know this. 
if air traffic controller is just going, okay, we've got this plane at, at the beginning of approach, it's looping around, can't land anything else because it's in the way. It's an American CIA plane, shoot it down. Over Zig. What do you think Zig is like saying to his wife right now? I just listened to these guys. <laughs> talk, I don't know what the hell they were talking about. All I know is my brain hurts and I'm going to dream about Klingons and people named the forest all night. Oh. Well, it's a good thing we didn't start talking about MASH. MASH. I know. Yeah. It, oh, all, all, you have to, all you have to do is tell me the title of the show. I can tell you everything. Uh, the See, title of the episode, I can tell you everything about it. I don't remember the titles, but I definitely remember every episode. That is my absolute favorite TV show of all time. And um, McLean Stevenson, I thought was funnier than Henry Morgan, but yeah. I think that's because Alan Alda took over a lot of the creative stuff. Well, because and McLean it got kind of preachy. All right, because I don't want to get into this, but I'm only going to say this: McLean Stevenson was designed to be funny. He was designed to be a civilian playing a colonel, right? Whereas Harry Morgan was a lifetime army officer; they couldn't make him a joke. So they right made now. everybody yeah. else a joke. Oh, the best, the best thing they ever did to MASH, and I'm not getting into this clearly, but the best thing they ever did to MASH was get rid of Frank fucking Burns and bring in David Ogden. Yeah. God, I, don't, I hate Frank Burns. I hate I don't, him. I don't, Larry Linville had some good moments. No, he was just a doofus, and I couldn't yeah. stand him. I get the whole point, you know, of him, of his existence. Like, I understand why he was in he the was show. He was a whole lot better on the show, as the, the character was a whole lot better on the show. Than the original in the original Mash. Though. In the movie. Oh, in the movie he was. The movie was just brutal. The movie was like uh, that was that movie make it cringe sometimes. Ooh, I can't believe they did that. You know what I mean? That, that movie was rough. Hawkeye was nothing like he is in the, in the what, TV show. No. What's funny though, and a lot of people don't realize, there was only one character from the movie that was also in uh, was also in the series. Spirit Trucker. Nope. Yeah. Yep. Right, Gary right. Berghoff. Right. Yeah. No, but Spirit Chucker was in the movie too. Yeah. But not Watch the character, but, again. but not the person. Wasn't the black guy, wasn't Spirit Chucker the same black guy nope. as he wasn't? No? Nope. Ooh. Gary Berghoff was the only one who was, all, who was in the See? movie and also in the series. Okay, I hand my mash crown to you now, Draco, because I could have sworn that they were the same person. Well, there you go. Uh. Again, I don't want to get into this. <laughs> Are they having a, is it, is it a dust storm down in Cairo? I don't know. It must be. It's very dusty down there. I had clear. I had clear weather. For me. Do you find this runway yet? No, I'm. I'm headed towards it. Very good. It, it's where the Airbus just took off. Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. I'm quite literally. I'm cloudy. I'm a thousand. Oh, it's, he's not. And... He's not visual at all. You got to get. You got to get yeah. a. You're never gonna. You're not visual. You don't even have the runway yet. I can't even see. Right. All I know is I'm following the pink line on the GPS and going, mm -hmm. yeah, it's about right. All right. Yep. Well, if you want me to help you, I can tell you you're off to the left of the runway yeah. quite a bit. Actually, quite a bit. Uh, this is where you need. This is where you need published approach procedures, so you know what what height you should be at by what mileage. Yeah. From the airport. Because my guess is, what are you at? Um, seventeen. High crop. What's your what's your what's your um. Zoom the damn screen out. Oh, I can't scroll down. Fuck. <laughs> okay. you can't... I'm, looking, I'm trying to hit my chase plane buttons to try to get a better view of the friggin' I see primary a flight light, display. I think, off to the side there. I'm not doing too bad. I can't see your glide slope. I can't see where your, where your glide slope is. Yeah, where you just have to there. straighten it out here in a couple minutes. Yeah. Okay, again, this is where I shut up and let you land the plane. Yeah, because what I've been doing for like for the last two weeks is wreck everything I've gotten into. <laughs> so now that I'm streaming, it should be slightly better. Are you going to tell me I'm? All right. I'm you're going to want. I'm past the. This is the airport. Where's the freaking pappy no. lights? You're going to want to kick it to your to your left now. Are you, okay. There's an east and a west, and that's the west. Because yeah. I can yeah. see it. Right. Is that a is that a plane on a taxiway down there, or it could be somebody taking off? All right, that's it. All right, got it. Right over that building. Yep, you're gonna go over this cluster of buildings, and then yeah. there's. I got it. I got it. I got it. 
Well, I tell you, this visibility is not good. I've landed many times in this kind of weather. It isn't fun. When you're not visual till you're actually on the run. Yeah. I'm a little but, high, but... I would say a thousand feet, probably, because you got a pretty tall... Yeah. What's you're going to the... clear. You're going to clear everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's going to clear it. Sure. What's the, what's the runway elevation? I don't know. I'm at five. Uh, it said 500 just a second ago, so... It's Cairo. It's got to be yeah. close to sea level. Well, it's a couple hundred feet up, I guess. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Here you go. Now you're visual. Finally. <laughs> Isn't that terrifying? Where the fuck is the runway? Oh, there it is. All right. I taxied the parking. You're too close to worry about the pappies now, anyway. Moondog, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Right. Oh, you're right on the slope, though. And right Moondog it. should touch down... A couple minutes. Now. He's, he's, yeah, no. I, I, he's, nope. I, he's not quite bounce. at the threshold there yet. There he goes. Oh, you've already... I, I forget I'm watching a stream. <laughs> yes, you've already landed. <laughs> Never mind. I'm still, I'm still enjoying it. <laughs> well, enjoy it. it. I think it was pretty darn good. Got all these jets lined up, ready to take off, so I'm going to need to get off of here pretty quick. Uh, yes, no. Yeah, all right. Very nice. Very nice. A little off the center, but, you know, okay. I hit concrete or asphalt, so. You landed better than I did. I kind of dribbled my plane down the runway quite a did bit. You, did you dribble it again? Well, but you... Oh, look. Look, well, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big bird over there. Taxiing down. Oh, well, she's I, parked. No, she's parked. Yeah, I, I landed a lot faster than what I should have, and just it bounced quite a bit. You were not clear to land, clear the runway. Mm. Yeah, that's a thing. Select another runway for landing. I'm already uh, canceling. Good way to listen to the ATC, but no. No. It said runway five left. I five left. One. Because you had another, well, you had another plane that probably. I was probably, they, they were probably said I needed to go around because of traffic and stuff. Hey, did you, anyways, yeah. Did they, so they didn't give you a tax? Uh, uh, no, they terminated his ATC because right. he didn't follow instructions. Turn to your left, Moondog, yeah. and follow that taxi way all the way, down, all the way down. Yeah, no, they've got me a taxi. I was just. Well, that was fun. Good job, Moondog. You know what? I don't. I wouldn't worry about default a ATC, but someday you guys got to try to fly on VATSO. It's it's terrifying sometimes, but it's a lot of fun. And the only thing is, you will have to listen to them. <laughs> VATSIM's free, right? VATSIM is absolutely free. Yep, absolutely free. So, and you get VATSPY, and you can find out where ATC is around the world, and you can pick flights based on that. You know, if you want to have ATC, if you don't, then you don't. And model matching works fantastic, and it's all you download all the all the different models for all the different planes and it dolls in your in the sim and it's all free and so you just have to learn how to talk but there's a million tutorials out there and i can help Moondog, did your game just crash or join fs drop out or something no because i was watching you then all of a sudden boop, gone oh, oh they shit. did give you a park they did give you a parking yeah even though they were mad at you yeah, well, they also wanted me off the runway too. Right. Yeah. So they could get that. So they could get their that heavy that's up there. Coming. Yeah. World travel seven six two five is fourteen miles southwest inbound ILS runway five left. Except that in the real world, you would be giving an altitude there at some point, probably a speed. Probably, yeah. So, are you actually still down here? Did you lose a uh, connection there? That's a possibility. It says awesome. I'm still connected. I just realized that that I can see your time on your taskbar, and I'm like, is it really that time? It really is. I gotta go, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's one thirty in the morning. Damn. Yeah, because I have it on display capture because <laughs> that's the only way. Because oh, I looks have really multiple good. windows. All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and end my stream here because I don't know if I dropped out or Doug dropped out. So yeah, thank enough. you. Thank you all very much for sticking around and watching the flight and listening to a bunch of useless chatter about Star Trek for an hour. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nothing once again, useless th about Star Trek. True. Thank you. Uh, special thanks to Zigzaggy for hanging out, even though he couldn't fly with us today. Um, hopefully he will will have everything Better for uh, going good for Saturday.
Uh, Mr. Moondog, once again, always fun flying with you. Uh, BP, thank you very much for popping in and hanging out with us, man. It was, oh. It's always fun hanging out with you. Anytime I can come and hijack a stream, you know, guy. So thank and, you for letting me hang out. And as always, you know, thank you guys for, for sticking around. Make sure you like and subscribe. Also, check out everybody in the Monkey Show crew. They're all a bunch of great guys, um, especially uh, Mr. Moondog, Zigzaggy, Bi the Bipolar Prophet, Farmer Dad, um, Cavalier Roy, Stuby. Um, make sure you stop in, check, out, check them out. If you like what you see, make sure you give them a subscribe and like their videos. And we will see you guys on sun Saturday. 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 We're flying. Yep, yep, Saturday, I think... Nine o'clock central, ten o'clock eastern. That's that's the plan. And we'll see what we do between now and then. Is we're, we're going to try and hijack this guy that's been talking into flying a plane with us, maybe. I will. And if you want something earlier on Saturday, remember the Monkey Show Live on YouTube and Twitch, uh, where we play ETS two and have a good laugh the whole time. So that'll give you something to do between. 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time and whenever these guys go live. Uh, and Saturday 2 and night. 10, which, yeah. Well, and also, cool. make, also you, make sure you check out uh, Farm Sim on Sundays with uh, the Monkey Show. Yes, and, always a good time. And if, yeah, and if Farm Sim's your thing, make sure you also sign up for the Monkey Show Olympics. Uh, get it and have a chance to win something pretty cool from, uh, from the Monkey Show. There you go. I think we've covered everything. Watch Star Trek. Yeah, you, you, I don't yeah think and watch Star Trek. Left, left me anything to say. I think I'm just going to hang it up and go, hey, they said it all. What more to do? I'm just going to park it here and go, yep, we're done. And watch Star Trek. A lot of good life lessons there, kids. Right. And, Actually, and you can join in on the next conversation we have. Uh -oh. You might have, you know, a clue as to what the heck we're talking about. Although the next one might be Star Wars, or it could be I don't know Star Middle Wars Earth. as well as uh, Lord of the Rings. I, I know pretty see, well. I, I don't know Lord of the Rings. Well, so you'll be able to learn something, Draco. <laughs> so, I know Lord of the Rings, best books ever written. Never read a book, uh, never read one of those books, never oh. watched one of the videos, so. Okay. All right. Okay, I can't be friends with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm but. assuming BP has even watched The Hobbit's... Uh, you know the death, the smogs, and all that stuff. Oh, that, of course I have. Of course I have read all the books. Why wouldn't I? Wouldn't I watch the movies? Peter Jackson's a fucking genius. Did a, I think? I think Tolkien would have approved. Oh, did a fantastic job. Right. So once again, thank you, uh, thank everybody, uh, thank you everybody for stopping in and checking us out, and everybody who's going to watch who would watch this in the future, and we will see you on Saturday. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Subscribe to Bipolar Profit on YouTube. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. And the end. It's a twitch. I can't help it. Oh. it, it it's a twitch. You hear goodbye and he does it. So, you know what? I'm not even going to give him a chance. We're just going to go. I'm t killing it right now. Everyone, <laughs> same thing. Uh, I can't reiterate it any better. Uh, hang out and enjoy us next time. We'll be... I'll be on... Let's see. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Oh, and I'm going to be actually doing work. Um, yeah, I will t try and be here at 4 for my stream. If not, it will be a little bit later on Wednesday afternoons. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow afternoon. It could be more of this. Um, then Saturday, I will be with the rest of the monkeys at 2 o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock, um, we'll be doing some more flying. And then Sunday with EP. It, uh, not Olympics this weekend. It's next weekend. The right? 20th. Right, the 20th. So... It'll be right make sure you get signed up. Yeah, yeah, sign, up. sign up Sign up on the 17th. You can find all the information on my Facebook page uh, at Bipolar Profit Gaming on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, YouTube, Bipolar Profit Gaming on YouTube. Uh, it's also on my Twitch page, Bipolar Profit yeah. 2 on Twitch. Right, so... Um, get signed up. Have some fun. Win a prize. Yeah, uh, and everyone, no matter how much you've been farming, has a chance because... There's we no ringers sure in it. this. There's no ringers in this. There's definitely not. So um, we made sure of it. Yeah, it's... and you and you also just get to hang out with a bunch of the monkey show too. So which is always a treat. Moodog, say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>